Well, I'm Jim Davis, and I do YouTubes, and you can watch them and be inspired and have advice and stuff, you know? Like, Pruitt's there. You should check him out, too. Uh, I'm, I'm here playing a, a character. I don't know which one yet, because my guy almost died last uh, time, so he might be uh, seeking to save his hide. Um, but, Charlie, like, how are you doing? It's been a week. How, how's it going? It has been a week. Where's the time go? I was suddenly sat there watching Call of Cthulhu about mm, an hour ago. I was like, oh shit, that's right. I play Warhammer today. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited to be back and playing uh, our little Dark House game where we're not sure whose side we're on, but we're on everyone's side right now as we are prepping to attack this Black Ark. I love to eat. I, I suddenly realized as I was showering earlier that I could have spent some sanity and gotten extra skills when I was making my character. I was like, no, I made a mistake. Terrible mistake. Uh, yeah. Tui mechanics are great. The fighting is brutal. Assassins in beds are fun surprises in the middle of the night. And on that note, I'm going to hand this over to Panda. How are you doing? Again, you're not putting me last. This is, this is terribly weird. Uh, I wasn't here last week, and I miss you guys very much, but I was suffering from... Uh, yeah, diarrhea. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm back now, though. I've, I've been filled in. Uh, yeah, it was. It was <laughs> You're the steam. Oh, I've got one panda. I've got a better segue. I've got a better segue. We've had the mud from me. We've got the blood from Golazol, and now we've got the shit from Panda. Oh my goodness, <laughs> it's gone now. It's all cleared up, nice and solid. Um, <laughs> please, no one tell Will this happened. Um. Yeah, so I'm back. Uh, I, I don't have anything to plug. I don't do anything else exciting, but it's, it's wonderful be, to be back with these wonderful people. Uh, and I'll, I'll pass you on to Prue. Yes, uh, the other piece of bread in the pandwich uh, that uh, <laughs> that you got to be the meat in. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm Prue with them, the other half of WebDM, as Jim said, and we're on the YouTubes and the Twitches. And uh, I look forward to... Uh, Donning the ego that is uh, Geiger Grimhart. Uh, whereas most people don't know which side they're on, Geiger knows exactly which side he's on. He's on Geiger's side. So we'll see how this uh, this all this whole uh, Black Ark raid pans out. Considering uh, he's pretty much lied all the way through it, and he will continue to lie because that is what Dark Elves do. You know what? Since you have the attention of the Chaos Chorus, this might be an appropriate time for Geiger to make his book pitch. Just saying. His book pitch. Have you ever uh, walked down an alleyway, seen someone coming, and you're like, oh no, and you duck into a building, or turn the other way, cross the street? No, no, no. That is not what happens here. What happens is you keep walking. You know why? Because you've already read The Art of the Kill, and you're not scared of anything. You know exactly where to stab them and what to stab them with. You know exactly what to do with the body once it's all said and done. Which chemicals you need to buy, because you can't get caught. We all know that. And remember, Always have pigs. Pigs can eat through anything. They'll never find the evidence. So, if you just spend $19.95 once a month for the next six months when you sign up for my program, you will get a signed copy of The Art of the Kill. Not only that, you will get one-on-one -on -one interactions at least once every other month. At a time of my choosing, of course. But, come on down to Geiger Grimhart's house and uh, maybe I'll... Uh, pour up a cup of coffee for you and maybe I'll poison it I don't know that's that's really all I got I, I, just, I, just <laughs> I liked it I was good uh, don't forget you can interact with the show you don't have to subscribe for the art of the kill but you can send us world magic surges net ones net twenties world magic surges and more take a look below for those donation options uh, shout out to the people who did donate last week I really enjoyed meeting my spider priestess getting my little Trinket, which I'm sure is only going to bring me good things, because that's what happens when you make deals with spider priestesses. Good things, right? Please? No? Yeah. Good things. No. Good things. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a pass from me, uh, in case you're wondering. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So we've done, like, intros and stuff. Um, Did intros and interaction just... you got to do your spots as well. 
Goddamn our sponsors. Well, today, everybody, uh, we are sponsored by FancyGrounds.com, our virtual tabletop of choice. <laughs> Thank you, Charissa. Check out FancyGrounds. You can download it for free on Steam or on their own website, FancyGrounds.com. Boilergames.co.uk is a go-to destination for tabletop war games, board games, and more. And uh, last but not least, Dice Envy are our sponsor for this week. You can go on their website, DiceEnvy.com. Uh, they have a subscription uh, service there. I think I actually went to it here. Maybe I do. I don't know. Uh, I'll go link to it here in a second, at the very least. And for just $5 a month and upwards, you can get uh, different dice sent to your house. Um, mystery dice um, and you can check out other ones as well they have like uh, upgraded different sets different materials different dice it's awesome definitely go and check it out um, cool let's do a recap of what happened last week on the show because uh, we got up to no good and Gareth wasn't here I guess so the uh, party have decided to uh, double cross and then double cross and then double cross and then triple cross and then there's some quadruple crossing and then there's just Animal Crossing, and they're double crossing a lot of people. Uh, they have taken on the uh, quest given to them by uh, who is supposed to be their enemy, Seven Fellhand, um, who uh, they at first were meant to kill, but now it seems like maybe they are going with him, it's tough to say. Um, and he gave them a quest to sort of prove themselves that they could be trustworthy to him. And his quest was to stop a black arc that was coming into Nagarond from ever showing up to Nagarond itself. And uh, turns out this black arc is actually Fetin's black arc, uh, the uh, Arc Royale. Fetin, of course, being their sort of fixer and arms dealer and uh, all the round uh, guy to go to. Uh, they had to make sure that that never got there, because it turns out that Seven uh, doesn't want the prisoner who is on board, who is said to be a high elf prisoner of some renown, to, to not get to Nagarond for all the glory and fame that might come with that. Now, it turns out that Fetin is a minion or pawn of um, Morafi, that's her name, uh, Morafi, who is the Witch King's mum. And there's a little bit of tension there. Uh, and when that was revealed, <laughs> there's been a whole lot of uh, a bit more stress going on because she's sort of a religious leader. The current plan, as I understand it, uh, and this was complex. <laughs> there was a lot of plans that happened. Current plan is that there is the Black Ark. They have told Fetin that someone's going to attack the Black Ark. So he was like, all right, come with me and we'll go stop that attack from happening. Geiger was like, oh, sure. So Golazal has hired people and told everyone that there's going to be this sort of freeding frenzy. Everyone's going to attack this Black Ark and steal all the treasure on board. The idea being that there's a bunch of pirates who are going to attack the Black Ark because everyone's told them that it's coming in. And the party will prove themselves to Fetin and, you know, help, help kill the, you know, the pirates, the raiders. And at the same time, maybe they steal the prisoner as well. Maybe they blow up the ship. There's and, lots of lots of things going on that could be happening. And ahead. don't forget, we fulfill our promise to Sibin, the Fellhand dude, by stopping the Black Ark from coming in. And Darcy hired a bunch of Shade Arrows specifically to attack because we said it was Shade Arrows that were attacking. Mm -hmm, that's and right. yes, that's the plan. How could I forget <laughs> such such a detail amongst all of the weaving, uh, <laughs> interweaving? Uh, so many lies. Yeah, it's, it's so many lies. The web just goes on. Where does it end? Um, it really is best if you are to lie to create a web of lies that you then yourself forget. Uh, so <laughs> that's that's just the best policy when you're a dark elf. So, and I think we left things off with Fetin coming to get you guys because he thinks that you're on his side right now. Um, oh, and of course, there was an assassin who stabbed Golazal in the dick. Um, <laughs> that's just a memory that comes back to me. Who was going after Darcy, but the party managed to kill Dot. Importantly, no permanent injuries from either of t uh, the two wounds that Golazal <laughs> has. So, when you next see Golazal, he's going to be sporting an armored uh, codpiece, but also, like, 
by some crotchless pants that highlight the stab wound. It's like a talking, you know, talking point, you know, like an icebreaker. Yeah. yeah. You're right, you're right, yeah. Well, I do know a yeah. good tailor who could make you those crotchless pants. Perfect. Just saying. Perfect. Uh, yes, no, no permanent injuries. So he, once it heals, he uses it as a, you know, it's part of the game. It's part of the game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so somewhere amidst this is Ive. Um, so, have we told Ive of what's going on in the broad strokes? No, so, you know. Roughly, does he know that there's a black arc and that you guys are trying to assault it? And I... Ive was part of the plan, right? Ive was yeah. part of the plan. Yeah, okay. no, no, Ive's gonna, Ive's gonna come with us with our, with our small band of uh, personal guards that will help us defend the black arc. From the shaders that are attacking. <laughs> well, in time. <laughs> Once the chaos is nice and churning, then we decide. <laughs> Amazing. And Charis D came to those eight pounds, a wild magic search for Geiger, and a nap one for Ive. <laughs> and so it begins. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> thank you. Let's roll on D10K for Geiger, and we'll see what on earth happens when we kick things up today. 2010. Alrighty, that was uh, yeah. Oh, what's yours? How old was I in 2010? I don't know. In 2010, I read like the first five, four. probably. Well, probably about five. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think probably five. Yeah, six maybe. 2010. <laughs> I was ten. Vega's face turns to wood. What? <laughs> He's <laughs> even more wooden than he normally is. I think that maybe this is a curse which has been laid upon Geiger when he wakes up, um, and who this curse is from is you know up to up to you guys to interpret. But certainly there was an assassin sent after you last night, which you destroyed. And when Geiger wakes up, his face is like crusty and wooden and bark-like. Does my nose get bigger every time I lie? Is that what this is? <laughs> <laughs> this is <fucking> huge. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> oh, 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 I want to be a real dark elf. <clears throat> All right, cool. I made the worst kind of morning wood. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I just have images of Geiger going to his little cabinet and opening up, and it's just like twelve brands of really bougie, expensive moisturizers, and he's like trying them all to try and rehydrate oh. his face. <laughs> It's super over moisturizing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So um, let's say then that we'll pick up from where we left off. Fettin, as tall, handsome, uh, bejeweled dark elf with this uh, band of diamond and golden teeth, uh, has arrived at your houses to uh, pick you up uh, because tonight is the night. And so we'll play for it again. There's like a little knock on the door, and we'll say that the four of you are all here. Uh, open it up and Fetton's there. Right, is everyone ready for the uh, throwdown? Looking forward to this one. Oh, it will be a battle worth recounting. Trust me. Trust me. Don't you worry, Fetton. Me and my boys will take care of you. No. Not only taken care of, but appreciate it. It's the thought that counts, though, isn't it? I suppose so. Come on in. We might as well get down there. First scouts are reported that ships are coming in. Quite a few of them. And mm, well. uh, let, let us hope you uh, fight better than you play cards. Mm. <sighs> he sighs, thinking back to the, the Nugget incident, uh, <laughs> which is probably the, uh, you know, the the lowest point in Fetin's life right now was, was losing to Ive. Um, just see him crushed. Uh, <laughs> gilded ball, sorry. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Gozo has had uh, surgery done to him by Darcy, so um, okay. whatever healing that might uh, induce upon you would have been, yeah, heal some wounds up and uh, injuries. I can roll for the second lot now if that's Yeah, let's do that. Or maybe in a moment, because it's not loaded into the right game, because I'm a dum-dum. 
<laughs> Sorry. Oh. In one moment. Mm-hmm. I can roll it. In one one moment. Ah, yes, please. Cool. You rolled a 13. All right. Let me have a look at my sheet, which is also in Fancy Grounds, but I have a cheat sheet, which is not in Fancy Grounds. Uh, is it, what did you say the number was? 50 something? Uh, 13. Oh, easy. I'm on like 65 for my healing. So you will heal two How wounds. How much you? Sweet. Because I am a surgeon. Nice. Sweet. Uh, we'll say as well that you could have procured a potion of healing god as well, which would have healed you for four as well. Because you went looking for like this witch doctor yeah, dude. Yeah, we went looking for the drugs. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He, oh yeah, he's like super coked up right now. Um, yeah, you, and, he's, yeah, he's on some uh, uppers. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, <laughs> so then... Uh, the group of you leave, get to the port, and uh, head out from Nagarond aboard Fetin's relatively smaller, basically a yacht, um, with uh, any of Geiger's uh, troop that he's brought along. I think Nolgor, the pirate, is there as well with Golazar, um, who's a piratical type who agreed to mm-hmm. set up this whole deal. Um, and... Uh, all of Fetin's soldiers as well. So presumably he has several hundred soldiers who are on board the Black Ark. He carries with him his personal retinue of about 20 soldiers as well. Um, and so the group of you sail out from the into the Sea of Malice, uh, which is uh, close to um, where the Black Ark will be, somewhere in the waters. Um, so yeah, just to check, Golazol is with you, right? Is he coming okay, with the yeah. party? I, well, that's a um, that's a question because I, I had thought he was going to be heavily uh, wounded, and, and uh, he probably would have, having visited the shrine of Morai Hag and been like, "Don't draw your uh, your rune from your you know my rune from your bag," and then barely survived an assassination attempt. Uh, Goldzal might have gotten spooked. And it's probably going to go, you know, uh, Nolgor and the like are uh, untrustworthy sorts. I think I will uh, visit them and go on ahead. I will see you on the raid. Um, and he will, he'll make sure Nolgor's there, make sure everything's set mm-hmm. up like it is. Uh, and may, um, I don't know, may even give someone his cloak as a disguise and then sneak aboard Vikalk's ship. Uh, big all the hubbub. Okay. So, do you want to play uh, like Nolgor today? I'll play Nolgor. I've got them all set up. Um, Sweet. But yeah, Gozal is smells uh, trouble and doesn't want it, and is not going to okay. come out of this one with another <laughs> with another dagger wound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I guess, I guess definitely then the there is a notable absence in the group with Gozal not being. Uh, with you, is that something that you know Darcy, I, or Geiger would uh, would comment upon? I don't think Darcy, for her part, would comment upon it. Uh, knowing the state of his injuries and seeing that we're about to head into chaos, she may just assume that he is resting at home, which was one of her suggestions. So she's hoping that's the case that he's decided he's uh, gonna try and stay whole, and we'll go back and tell him the good news. Darcy, for her part, had to sew up her arm from last time. She got a nasty poison slash. And I think today she's going to be wearing her mask uh, to obscure her face and also just be intimidating. Because uh, <laughs> it's not clear whose side she's on and she's just going to be following along. <laughs> I imagine so, uh, I've heard like 30 versions of this plan over six different times from three different people so like he's just not entirely sure what's going on completely he's just doing what he's told and he's following along with a group uh, so he probably even if he's noticed that he's not there he's probably just thinking oh i must have missed a part of the plan so he's just keeping stump uh and, and geiger is going to find um going to find fetton uh maybe once we're on the ship and kind of heading out while he's alone and be like i'm sure you've noticed that Golazal isn't here I um, didn't want to tell you before now because I hoped it wasn't true, but I think he might be a turncoat. We might want to watch these men. They were his initial hires, so... But I felt I should be up front with you. Over it. Uh, That is a disappointment. 
I know. He uh, I thought he was my uh, battle brother, but I guess I was wrong. He looks towards Nogor. You. Come in. Nogor will walk over. So, uh, do what you're saying true then about Golazov, Tanko, the eye at you. Yeah, I don't see him around here. I don't know where he is. Trader's money spins just as well, though. Well, still need a uh, crew for now. We'll see. Well, uh, you find yourself in need of one. We find ourselves recently uh, unemployed then. Be happy to uh, help out. You would do well not to cross me. I have some powerful allies. Hmm. It seems like it, yeah. And he, I imagine he knows who Fenton is. Yeah, for sure, yeah. He may have even dealt with him before. Mm hmm Yeah. Very well, no go. I'll pay you well if you do your job. Sounds good. And, uh, you know, he's got his crew with him who are all ready for, uh, ready for a raid. Absolutely. Uh, so, as you guys travel through the murky waters, uh, it's not long before in a distance on the Sea of Malice, you can see uh, what appears to be a very large vessel, uh, and it would appear as though there is a battle taking place in the middle of the water. The Black Ark appears to have stopped, and there are smaller vessels which have surrounded it. And you can see sort of flaming arrows uh, volleying back and forth uh, from the ship itself. And Fetten says, Blast! They got there ahead of us. Damn scab rap scallions. He says, uh, Ten gold for every shade arrow head you bring me. Ten gold. And. Oh. We- Bit of a cheer from the Corsairs from that, I'd imagine. Uh, Got, uh, he sips some, <laughs> Fetten sips some wine, and he's sending his ship uh, to join back with the Black Ark. We'll get back aboard and defend it from there. Mm. I guess we start taking up positions and readying weapons and... Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, the closer, the closer you get, the, uh, the closer to danger you uh, become. As um, you can see that on the deck, there is clearly a uh, battle being done. Uh, there are clearly the Dark Elf defenders of Fetins on the Black Ark who are fighting against these Corsairs, uh, who also appear to just be sort of raiding. Uh, there are about ten ships, uh, smaller yachts, really, barks and the like, similar to the uh, cruiser which uh, you guys are on. And if you were to estimate, these ships could each hold about 50 people on them. So there's probably a vast amount of Dark Elves that are out here tonight to attempt to steal the riches that Fetid has. Um, and you guys combined, I think I have about 40 people with you right now as well. Um, Fetin wants to get to the Black Ark and get on board so you guys can help defend it. Um, but other vessels in the water right now are sort of slightly precarious, uh, seeing as they're just sort of sitting ducks in the water. Um, if you guys would like to do anything about that, you would have a chance to before you got onto the Black Ark itself. <coughs> mm. okay. I could loose a flaming arrow as I am a longbow specialist. Mm-hmm. That's that definitely sounds like something you might want to do. Yeah. So I, I guess it depends how hard are you guys trying to kill these people as well. Like how much of a show are you putting on, and how much is legit? Oh, oh well, 
<laughs> we're here to defend him right up until the point that we're not, and so <laughs> right. all that Convincing all that battle is doing is is whittling away his allies. That's all. That's all. Mm -hmm. This is how Geiger sees this. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean he's he's loosing arrows, you know, as we're as we're sailing in towards the Black Ark as well. <laughs> okay. Uh, what about eyes? Uh, are there any boats? Uh, like smaller boats that look like they've been abandoned, maybe either the crew's been killed or they've leapt onto the Black Ark. Is there any that look even really kind of undermanned? Uh, Robbie, a uh, awareness. Uh, I can give you a perception. Ah, uh, yeah, sorry, yeah. I'm in between too many games. <laughs> <laughs> 11. Um, I tried to call for a spot hit and then... Uh, <laughs> and I was like, uh, two degrees of success. Wait. It's an awareness, yeah. Um, nice. Uh, yeah, you spot this little... Basically a dinghy, right? Like, all of these ships have, uh, like, escape, you know, vessels on them that you mm -hmm. could use to get out in a pinch. Um, and there are a couple of these, you know, boats that have just been left unmanned around the area. It's a little bit like Titanic right now. You know, and now they're just sort of like ships, sort of everywhere. I, don't know. I, well. that. I imagine that's what Titanic's like. <laughs> Fucking boats, people in the water. Yeah. Except the big ship hasn't sunk yet. Yeah, except it hasn't sunk yet. <laughs> so our and first Titanic. Like a good movie. Sure. Mm. Uh, so um, if if there's the chance for me, I still to... like have a Titanic two on fucking Netflix the other day. I was like, what the fuck is this? Why did? Why would you do a second one? What possible follow up could you do to the thing for the ship being sunk? I don't know. Anyway. It, it's a story sail where off. they both could fit on the plank and sail off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then that sinks and then it's very... Um, if I get a chance to be able to get onto one of these dinghies or see... If, if there's one off the Black Ark, that'd be fine. But I'm just looking for... It may well be that we go and take this guy, but we need to be able to get him back as well. And obviously we can't exactly just hop on this ship freely. Uh, so it's just a matter of looking our exits and trying to Do secure have... one for definite. Do we have any grappling hooks on board? Are you like, we could throw it out, we grab onto another boat and pull it to us so that we can just boat hop, we can bring the enemies yeah. to us to stab a bit more. You can oh, definitely yeah. boat hop. Oh, by the way, Darcy, you have a wild magic surge from Charis, so I'd like Ooh. to roll it. Sure will, thank you. Uh, <laughs> die. One, two, ten thousand. Stephen goes first when the ship arises and arrives. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's that. nine, eight, twenty for me. Oh, that's really high. Yeah. It is really high. Nice. So fucking high. Like, uh, like suddenly, Bob, Bob oh my god! Suddenly, <laughs> it's raining harder than anyone has ever experienced. So, it is about to go full fucking Helm's Deep. As yeah. so, it begins as um, squall arises. Yeah, suddenly there's this <laughs> huge storm which is erupting in the eye of the Sea of Mal in the center of the Sea of Malice, where you guys are at right now. Uh, and it crackles out, uh, sparks of lightning, thunder rolls, and the intensity of the rain is such that uh, it's almost like hail. You know, it's it's almost uh, becoming hail, which becomes fucking dangerous when you're out in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. Hold fast! The sea sends and a squall to stop us about our business. Fenton smiles and says, My mistress sends her regards. I like my um, version better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think there was. You guys want to. I do want to get onto a dinghy, or you want to like grapple a dinghy in and like. <laughs> pull it in there. Yeah. If, if there's a chance, is is there a dinghy check? Mm. Um, yes, there, there is. A dinghy check. There is a row uh, skill. Yeah, a D1 <laughs> dinghy. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. There is a row skill. You can roll that. Uh, I got a 40 on my right. That's two degrees of, of dingle failure. So, with all the dongling happening, uh, <laughs> you forget to bedongle yourself in the correct bedingling. And that leads to a severe case of bedoozles. And uh, I, right now, is just <laughs> rowing around in circles in the storm uh, on his little dinghy. It's like, it is going somewhere. It's just you're unable to control it. Uh, due to the storm, and there's just so many people screaming and fighting and dying aboard this black arc right now. 
Uh, I just start, I, I start punching the boat out of frustration and then try and row again. Um, but I, I'm trying to follow behind this yacht to uh, get back in the fight rather than just kind of <laughs> plodding around on the rowing lake. Yeah, you're Starboard doing... eyes. Starboard. <laughs> you're, like a, you're like a fucking Oxbridge Cambridge <laughs> race right now. <laughs> I've actually got on a swan pedal though. <laughs> and there's all these badass dark elf ships and I'm just pedaling <laughs> around on a day trip. So there was a, in where I got around Colchester, there was this in the park. There was there was a big pool, and this where they put all these little rubber, you know, rowboats and shit, where little kids can go on it in the summer. And one year there was a serial killer in Colchester, and um, <laughs> as it's fucking Colchester, they drained the river because they killed someone in Colchester Park. And in this little river where they find where little kids float, there was no less than seven weapons that they suspected to be used in different murders. This <laughs> is perfectly good. Using this as inspiration. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> so um, that was a total side But anyway, uh, I you are going around on your rowboat of doom in the slipstream of the yacht. At this point, Fetchin's boat has made contact with the Black Ark. They start to throw grapple lines up, and his soldiers start to climb up on board the Black Ark. Uh, what do you guys want to do? Yeah, if they're uh, uh, Geiger, he's gonna out. he's gonna make his way up uh, on top of the black art and uh, begin prepare to repel borders. Rock and roll. Let's roll some mission. And for people, which is uh, D10 plus the agility thing, right? So yeah, we're playing two E, but we're doing uh, yeah D10 plus our uh, agility mod. Yeah. Because <laughs> we like the rule. Love rules. Seven for eyes. No it should have been eleven for me. It didn't add my modifier. Okay. Eight. Nice. That's wow, eight. ten for Nova. It's gross. Disgusting. And Geiger on the 12. Got these dudes. Seven for Fettin's men. And for the quote unquote shade arrows, they're going last. That is the shade arrow way. Yeah, that's. This is why you guys quit them. We go last. We go last. All right, so Nolgor, you arrive on deck, and the scene is very much that out of the end of Pirates of the Caribbean three, uh, in which everything is manic. There's some kind of whirlwind storm going on, and a couple of people getting married. It's weird. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, Nolgor and his crew were like at the uh, yeah, at the rails, really like, using their crossbows and like to pick off uh, people before the the squall got too bad. So. If there's uh, adventure to be had on the deck of the Black Art, they are going to uh, scramble up the nearest uh, way, whether it's grappling hooks uh, or what, uh, whatever, um, and find wherever these uh, filthy shade arrows are. Because, absolutely, uh, how, how absolutely, yeah. Do they? Yeah, you pull yourselves up. Uh, you pull yourself up onto the deck and immediately identify what appears to be the defenders and the boarders. Uh, the defenders are uh, notable because they wear these streaks of purple, like a purple sash, basically, uh, to mm. distinguish themselves as fetons. Whereas the rest of these people are just random sort of pirate dark elves, I guess. They're not really wearing any particular uniform. They look like sort of sailors and sea dogs. Um, and you immediately identify that there is basically a shield wall which fetton soldiers have held, uh, which is currently holding uh, against the assaults from the, uh, the rest of the dark elves that are attacking. All right. Well, I am going to uh, find where uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I guess if there's like a, a enemies fighting against the shield wall, we'll try like pin them, and uh, Mulgore will uh, lead that charge quite conspicuously. He'll make sure that Fenton sees him in his actions, but also that he's not like the first one there. Uh, right. A couple of his flunkies go before him, takes them, uh, takes some hits right. out of the way. You can roll me um, a. Uh... Uh, attack row, if you like. There we go. All 
I know who are. Ooh, probably not. Yes, uh, unless he gets some significant benefit, uh, he is going to miss with his. Uh, yeah, so I think you get the plus ten from it being surrounded, but um, yeah, uh, but that won't not quite enough. make it. No, uh, it's, it's, like you probably recognize this dude. The dude that you're fighting, you recognize him. Like he's a sailor that you you know sailed with for all of your life, and you're like yeah. you know cross sabers, and he's like Elgar. <laughs> Fighting for the other side now. <sighs> and he like, <laughs> like cutlass. It's very pirates, and that there's like a moment of banter between like a bunch of sword play, and then you go back into it. Yeah, amazing. And, um, <laughs> Geiger Grimheart, you arrive on deck to see Nogor fighting one of his old friends, um, and a clear shield wall set up by the Fetin Stark Elves. Yeah. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll I'll move up, uh, letting out a, a battle cry that can can be heard by uh, our commanding officer here, uh, and I'll run up and seeing uh, seeing this guy engaged in a bit of banter and distracted, uh, Geiger, remember his own teachings, and if an opponent is not paying attention, he's as good as dead, so uh, he's gonna try to stab that guy. I like it. Fuck. <laughs> I don't think even with the bonuses to, to that, um, you're going to be able to hit him. So, like, I want to say that everyone knows this guy. He's like the, the one pirate that you guys want to He's like, uh, his, his name is Jim. Obviously, it's Jim. Uh, Jim, yeah. Jim, 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 and then you're on the other side, and then he like crosses blades of Geiger. Like, Geiger, <laughs> Jim, ah. Oh. <laughs> uh, I, you, you arrive on deck. You don't know this guy. He's the, uh, I'm the one guy that doesn't know Jim. <laughs> does Does he look aggressive? Is he showing any signs of? He has a saber, and he's definitely murdered a couple other people here so far today. It just went super quiet for me. Is that the same Yeah. Yeah, it went super quiet for me. Yeah, I think you're back now. Hello? Hello? Yeah, you got really quiet there, Gareth. Hello, is that better? So quiet. Yeah. So quiet. I can hear you, but it's quiet. Okay, I'll have a look into that in a second. Uh, you're back. I rolled a there you are. You're back. You're back. Uh, I <laughs> always is, Will. Um, <laughs> I rolled a <laughs> second. <laughs> Um, yes, no one can hit Jim. He's like fucking invincible right now. He's he's dancing between Nogor and Geiger's blades. He's uh, weaving and ducking between arrows. Um, and he seems to be a sort of, at least ahead of this band of soldiers which are currently attacking. It seems like uh, Captain Jim is the one who's in command. Um, Darcy, you arrive on deck and you kind of recognize this guy. It's that guy Jim who's, uh, you know, Maybe you you know him because you're also a pirate and a sailor. You, you stitch up his wooden leg. I passed up his patch leg. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I imagine that she's actually going to continue doing fire arrows because oh, there's a big group of people. Let's set them on fire. Oh, what do you mean this is a bad idea? Because we're meant to be saving the ship. My bad. <laughs> right. um, the yeah, classic gonna... uninterested incompetent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so, yep, adjust the mask to make sure she can see, loads up her bow, she's not going to aim particularly, she's not snipering, so she's just going to take the shot. Sure. And... Oh, I have I'm, a just a, now. I'm just a foolish person with a lot of fire, you can't blame me. What was I thinking? <laughs> uh, roll. Ooh, that hurts. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> so... So Jim's, Does the rain put uh, out my arrow and it's really distracting? I, yeah, I think so. It feels like, yeah, the, the rain is so heavy and hard. It's like clattering off the armor of everyone who's wearing it here. Uh, and it extinguishes the fire as soon as it comes and sort of dampens the arrow. The fletching on it isn't going to fly so true in the in the rain. Uh, and it sort of just takes a downwards uh, spiral and lands near Jim's feet as he has managed to evade four people's attempts to uh, to murder him and any one given turn. Uh, he's going to attack back. Uh, he's going to swipe at Geiger. Darrr! Traitors! And uh, 
Ross are fucking well in this game. Rolled a 19 to, uh, to attack it and try and dodge out of him. Yeah, uh, Geiger's gonna di Geiger's gonna do a little bit of a little bit of dodge blow there. Um, where are you at? There you are. Damn it! <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. I take I take that back. Uh, well, that's minimum damage. Uh, that's gonna be four. All right. So he manages to get a cut in. It's not particularly a deep wound, but it certainly is going to uh, bite a little bit as... Oh, uh, I actually, actually, no, my, my armor and toughness is five, so... There you go. My armor turns it away. <laughs> yeah, he scrapes at it, getting in a lick, proving himself to, to be a decent swordsman at least, but uh, not really getting in a cut. Arr, to me, mateys! He screams in Dark Elf. <laughs> Uh, and uh, Fettin's on board, and he just cuts down one, then two people uh, with his sword. Bring me their heads, he shouts, and uh, the storm seems to thunder out even heavier after he makes that call. Nolgor, it's round two. You've got Captain Din, uh, who's uh, in your face right now. It's surrounded as well. All right. <clears throat> Uh, he's going to... Is, is there... Um, what's around uh, the captain? Is he just sort of like surrounded by his crew? Or are they, they still holding... Yeah, there are other soldiers fighting up? around him, um, for sure. Uh, he's close enough to the railings where you could try and push him off if you wanted to. As well. mm. I think what... I think what Nolgor's going to try to do is he's going to try to push someone else into Jim and just like knock him down and so he's like one of his crew is gonna like grab by the baldric and throw into uh Nolgor and see if he can't knock him down or, or off the deck. Um, right in the baldric. Yeah, all of it. Mm -hmm. Just a, whatever this big scrum is that we're in. What kind of uh role do you want me to make? I guess that would probably be like a strength. Yeah. Alright. Here we go. With my prodigious dark elf strength. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> it, like tries to grab him and, and it, it's unsuccessful. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you try and throw someone into Jim. Slips, Jim, just, like, Jim throws the whip, goes with it, and like throws him over the edge and just sort of like mm. casts him aside uh, as he beats <gasps> the dude off into oblivion as he Wilhelm screams off the side. <laughs> 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 Uh, the question is, does that, use, does that use all my action in an attempt to... That, that might, that I think might that like is an action to, 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 to try and body check him. Um, okay. You could probably... Get like another <laughs> half pretty action. Move, at least. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna make... Alright, I am going to... Uh, if I only have a half action left, uh, then I'm going to attempt a, uh, a parrying stance and, okay. you know, see if he, he won't survive this, uh, this attack here. One thing you could do is spend a fortune point and gain another half action, if you want to. I don't know that Nolgor has such a thing as that. I'm, I'm using the, the Dark Elf Pirate stats from the uh, Bestiary book, which is... Mm. It's alright. He's okay. It's He's all right. pirate. <laughs> <laughs> He's no <cold> all. <laughs> but, uh, that's what I'm going with. So he's parrying uh, after his attempt at, uh, uh, to knock the scout's feet. <laughs> Alrighty, so there is just a, it's just a flail of limbs and swords around this previously fairly unremarkable pirate, Captain Jim, who's now becoming something of a legend aboard the deck of the Ark Royal, and fed in, like, shouts at Geiger and says, I thought you said you were good! Kill him! And Geiger, it's your turn to prove yourself. I, I yell back to Fedden, it's all in the setup, uh, and I'm gonna roll. Uh, because the whole deal was I let that, that, that last uh, swipe of his by so I could catch his sword in my arm. And so, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a big old hit to the uh, left arm. Nice. And let's roll some damage. Let's do that. Uh, so it's going to be 10 damage Ooh. to the left arm. That's going to hurt. It bites through his armor and uh, cuts through into flesh of his arm, and you pull away the saber, and you look back at Fettin, who grins uh, menacingly, but clearly pleased by the display of bloodshed which you've given him. Captain, you're like, oh, 
fight Kate and hers. Uh, yeah, I'll give him a, I'll give Fetton a little bit of a salute with the sword, and then uh, kind of spit at the ground next to Captain Jim. Alrighty. And I, if it becomes your turn. Uh, I was going to kind of take stock, uh, pull another arrow, and kind of this time take a little bit more time uh, to aim. Maybe the raindrops just slow for a second as he's aiming his shot, uh, and I loose an arrow towards him. That's a seven. Uh, and that will be uh, ten points of arrow damage. Nice. Uh, that's a critical hit, so you can uh, roll that crit, baby. Uh, I'll just roll this again. So the location is going to be number six. Head? Uh, which is his head. <laughs> <laughs> Suffice it to say, uh, his head is going to be in a whole lot of pain. <laughs> Dear, dear. I found Wait, low is, weekend, low is good, right? I always forget. Low is good. It, yeah, low is really good. Unless it's happening yeah. to you and then it's bad. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, goodness. Alrighty. Um, how would you like to do this? Uh, as you send an arrow through the back of his skull, um, what happens here? Uh, I imagine he's kind of toss tussling with Geiger, like sword to sword, and like maybe him, him and Geiger are kind of pushing and having a test of strength then Geiger feels him suddenly go limp as an arrow kind of pierces through the back of his skull and stops within like an inch of Geiger's own face sticking through his face as well nice nice Jin dies uh, instantly as uh, the arrow goes through the back of his skull uh, kill stealer <laughs> that is clearly enough to um, to break the morale of Captain Jim's pirates uh, as they are going to retreat as they go, try and grab his body, bring Jim back for some kind of ceremony. Uh, he's got a lot of kids that are going to want to you know, have a proper funeral. Um, you know, I just had an image of little kids that were going to go hungry and then them eating dead Jim. My brain went a really dark place really quickly. <laughs> Suddenly, very dark. Yeah. <laughs> Proud of you. So, um, <laughs> Darcy, it becomes your turn. Uh, uh, it seems like, like the defense. Yeah, go ahead. I would like to actually, from under my mask, murmur to the pirates that there's good loot to be had. They don't need their leader. And just encourage them to come back into the fray. Okay. So, you know, um, um, grab one and tell him you'll be missing out on the booty if you bounce now. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a promise. Let's see. Uh, you could give him a, a like an intimidate or a charm or a command. I would any, ideally any like to do intimidate because I have my very scary mask on, uh, which adds ten to my intimidate skill. Alrighty. I think that's what I want to do. Sure. <laughs> there we go. I'd be real scary. Nice. The uh, pirate is like, yeah, you're right. I'm not going nowhere about this booty. And uh, draws his sword and goes back into the fight again, um, afresh, taking some new soldiers with him. Um, you can tell that the fight is going like fairly well. There are a lot of people sort of come several waves. Um, the one thing which isn't offended is like the entrance into the lower decks. Uh, which, if you are smart, is probably where the holds and possibly the uh, prisoner uh, and treasure is, which isn't really being watched, and all of you would note that if you wish to try and get down there or something. Or not. Yeah, I would definitely be wanting to move in that direction and more onto the ship than we are, but I don't know if I can really mm -hmm. achieve that this go. Yeah, you can start moving towards it at the very least. Okay. Uh, next time you'd be, you'd be in there. Okay. Um, Let's swing things over then to... Uh, let's see, those of you in combat. Uh, oh, if someone's going to come and try and kill you. Uh, pirates. You rolled a 13. God damn it. Uh, can I try and 
dodge that, please. That doesn't. Yeah, you dodge blow. Uh, I get one de degree of success. I'm nice. Not sure how many you... Yeah, we don't really do all the degrees of success that much in second end. It's just as okay, long as there's cool. a pass, you're, you're going to be good. Uh, yeah, so like that guy. Opposed. I do the yeah. splits to dodge his swing. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Keeping those golden nuggets intact. Uh, <laughs> there, someone's going to come in to attack you on a 43. I think it's just going to be a hit. It is. Okay. Uh, I will uh, attempt to dodge blow as well. Oof. Are you fucking kidding me? It is 10 points of damage coming into your 96 uh, left leg. Alright, so I take 5. He comes in with the saber, severing part of the tendon uh, and uh, taking pleasure in the amount of pain which is causing you. While one other person is going to attack Nolgor in this sort of brawl and melee which is taking place here. 52 is a miss. Oh! He <laughs> swipes in towards you and clangs down into your sabers. Uh, we swing back around to the top of round three, and Nolgor, it is your turn, my poetical friend. All right, so this guy that just attempted to uh, attack me, if there's still a comment about Nolgor, uh, is, uh, is on it. So he's going to attack uh, this guy that got him. Oh, probably not. Uh, that's a big miss. Uh, and with the rest of my half action, he'll go back to his parrying uh, stance he was in. Excellent. Alrighty. So, <laughs> Geiger. <laughs> okay. Uh, so Geiger is going to, uh, taking this uh, shot on the leg, he's going to kind of stumble back towards the entrance to the lower decks and kind of do like a, a fighting retreat uh, as he's like trying to lure this guy. So half action move and then the other half action is uh, going to be uh, take a swipe with the long sword. Get him. Ugh. We still don't have a bonus, do we? Uh, he's not surrounded, so uh, yeah. So no. Um, it's okay. It, delay it, it, it delays the, uh, the, the story of, of getting closer to the, uh, the entrance. All right. Geiger swipes. The Ardla Kill is not in his favor tonight. I, there is a pirate dolph who has set himself upon you, his task being to murder you. What would you like to do? Uh, I kind of quickly throw the uh, bow over my shoulder, uh, and then in the same motion, I kind of free a dagger from uh, my hilt uh, and attempt to kind of just slash open his guts and watch all the good stuff fall out. Uh, that's going to be 28. Uh, so that succeeds. Let's chuck some damage. That's going to be uh, th four damage. Uh, beautiful. Uh, four is just going to get through, I believe. Maybe not, actually. Uh, yeah, just about. These guys aren't very long. But so um, you stab a dagger into the uh, right leg. Of this and as you sink the blade in. Uh, anything else you want to do, Ive? Uh, I can't really get away. Uh, can I see if like people are flowing from a particular location or flowing to a particular location on this boat? They're coming up it... ropes, so um, you could try and cut the ropes on the grappling hooks off if you wanted to you know, prevent them from coming up. They're coming from both sides of the ship, so on the uh, left and right hands of the ships where they're coming up from, uh, where their boats are down below. Cool. Uh, I won't be able to do that at the moment because he'll he will stab me in the butt. Uh, so I'll wait, and as soon as I can kill this guy, I'll, I'll go do that. All right. And then Darcy. All right. Before she retreats down the hatch, I want to shoot a flame arrow up at a sail. Because the more chaos is okay. going on up here, quieter it's going to be downstairs. Okay. Um, so yeah, I guess half action to try and get my arrow light and then just up the, up the sail. Send it out. It's almost impossible to miss it. I mean, the, the masts are big enough to grab. So okay. yeah, you uh, I don't usually miss. down. Yes. Yeah, I mean, like the, the storm is certainly fighting against the fires, but uh, a small blaze will uh, begin 
aboard the ship, and there's a little bit of, of worry about that beginning to uh, work his way through the crowd. And then just slip down the stairs. Yes. Or down the hatch. Is it like, a, like an open... It's been, yeah, there's there. a hatch, but the hatch is open down into like a staircase down into the lower decks. Um, okay. Yeah, Alright, so we'll get to that in a moment. Then we've got Ive, Geiger, and Nongor who are currently in battle. So Ive attacks you and critically misses. Uh, he's going to slip on the deck. Uh, there's just blood and water running underfoot, and he's on his back, which will give you an advantage. Uh, Geiger, he rolled an 83, so really missed. And Nongor, he rolled a 37, so just about hits. Unless you've got something you can do in a parrying stance. I have a dodge and a parry. I'm going to try my dodge Sweet. first because I'm better at it. Um, and yes, dodge. Uh, dodge out of the way of that one. So like, nice. He brings it down uh, just where your skull was going to be. Dodge out of the way. And it swings back around, chop around four. Null gore. What would you like to do with me? Oh, man. So we're in it. This is an epic battle, and Nolgor is like already thinking of ways he's gonna embellish this one um, mm. as he uh, makes a lunge and oof, no dice, misses once again with his uh, saber. In Nolgor's mind, it's a truly epic struggle of uh, giants, warriors, uh, gods amongst the elves uh, on this uh, rain-lashed uh, deck of the ship. And that's how it gets told later. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> he's already starting the narrative. Like, he's like, maybe I should talk to Geiger about this, and like, maybe we'll do an offshoot <laughs> yeah. book. And there's a so short story. An appendix to that book of his. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you write the forward. Mm. <laughs> uh, then Geiger, um, uh, <laughs> what would you like to do? Uh, yeah. So Geiger is going to go ahead and uh, how close? How far away is he from the from the stairway going down? Uh, you're a move action away. The problem is that there are people, you know, you, you're in a battle right now, so you might get swiped at if you were to just move. Okay, well, no, no, I wanted to continue the kind of like, mm -hmm. you know, testing, fighting, retreat to get uh, before he strikes, uh, and then he's going to take a swipe uh, once they're near the, uh, near the entrance. Okay. I love it. You just start trying like hard enough. Wrong. I know. I need to click harder on the mouse. That'll that'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. that yep. might that might do it. All right, you've, uh, your companions are struggling in this battle right now. What would you like to do? Uh, so this guy on the floor is he completely prone or? Um, yes, he is completely prone. Uh, so I'm going to try and finish him off uh, with 32. Yeah, that should do it. That'll do it. Um, and that's going to be 11 points of damage. That's more like it. These guys aren't particularly well armored, and they're kind of just grunts. So how would you like to kill this man as you stab him in so, the right arm? While moving forward uh, purposefully, uh, I've kind of just nonchalantly reaches down and kind of slices at this guy, uh, hoping to either finish him off or immobilize him before he kind of heads to these ropes uh, and starts using his dagger to hack away at this rope and, and, and free them from the ship. Awesome. Nice. Uh, okay. Swipe it out of ropes. Darcy. You are below decks. Uh, there's not a fight happening here, but there are guards as you go downstairs, deeper into the hold. Uh, there are guards who are on what you would expect to be like the hold doors. And there are two of them, both with halberds. And uh, they sort of like lower their halberds the closer you get towards them, somewhat nervously. I think Darcy walks with extreme confidence and she kind of raises her arm across her body, and you see the gift from the priestess is clamped onto her wrist. Fetin sends me. I must assist in defense of this keep. Let me inside. Not keep. Ship. Run. Run a boat. <laughs> Where are we? Oh, for a second. Uh, 
They're like, yeah, he, he gave us orders not to let anyone inside the hold. Well, orders have changed. Open the door. Menacing mask. A... You roll me an intimidate, you got your plus, you got a plus 10 for your uh, amulet being on you. You're intimidated by that. Rolly, rolly, rolly. Yes. I'm scary, AF. Yeah. Um, they're like. Fine, but don't spend long in there. She nods and then she understands why she doesn't want to spend long in there. And goes yeah. inside. Okay, and we'll get to you in a moment. Uh, meanwhile, Ive, Geiger, and Nilgore are still in fight. So actually, I killed a guy. Um, so, Geiger... A 75. Uh... That's Wait. not a hit. Yeah, that's yeah. not a hit. He's gonna <laughs> swipe and miss there. Uh, Nolgor, oh a 14 is gonna hit. 14 is gonna hit. Let's see if his luck uh, still holds. Uh, we'll go with that dodge. It's the only one he's got now. Oof, just barely. That's a, bear, that's a uh, standard success on a dodge. Nice. He uh, swipes in and uh, misses as you dodge away. <laughs> he just like starts taunting him now and just that ah, kind of, uh, you know, pirate shit. <laughs> it's just fucking pirate shit, man. <laughs> All right, top round five, uh, Nolgor, you get a chance to respond. Oh my God, Nolgor just hit something once. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Uh, no. Well, unless, well, yeah, I don't know that he gets more than 20. I don't know that he gets like at least <laughs> 20. Uh, you get plus He's 10. Not. But, uh, yeah, not that. Not, <clears throat> not for old uh, Nolgor here. The sea makes his joints ache and his cutlass is dull and rusted. Um, <laughs> but he continues his attack uh, with gusto and uh, flourish. Nice. It's a trade of blades going on aboard the deck. Geiger. Okay, uh, yeah, so Geiger is going to continue doing what he does, which is he's going to try to uh, swing around and attack this guy and, and uh, hopefully knock him down the stairs if any if he can. Okay. Uh, <sighs> <laughs> Do you remember in the beginning of this show where we were like, we really don't think the missing thing's a problem? <laughs> <laughs> but look at the dramatic <laughs> tense for the <laughs> you guys trade blades uh, and blows once again. I I think you're trying to cut off uh, the ropes to the uh, grappling hook, is that correct? Yeah, the hook to thin out their numbers a little bit so they can't get on the ship as easy as possible. So I'm, I'm just trying to thin them down. Do you want me to roll a combat check against the uh, ropes? Yeah, and the amount of degrees of success will dictate how many ropes you can cut off. Uh, I get three nice um, degrees. Sweet. So I just go along, chop, chop, chop with the dagger uh, and source through grappling hooks. You hear the, the screams and the then splash from below as uh, dozens of boarding dark elves are thrown into the chaos of the ocean below, which will undoubtedly take them and their lives. Uh, Fake the Jory and Drake delays 10 pounds, monster attack, actually summoning a twister at sea with a water spout sea whirlwind to decimate the ships in the sea battle. Storm danger level increase. <sighs> Sick. Uh, so as you cut off these ropes, you see that the ocean is almost coming alive. Uh, there is at the center of this uh, chaotic battle what would appear to be some kind of whirlpool. It looks to be almost a monster in itself. It, looking into it, it seems like it has a jaw, but it's just made of water, and it seems to be eating everyone who's getting inside of it, drowning them inside its depths. And the Black Ark itself is beginning to drift closer towards it. The power of the storm is, is such that it's becoming very dangerous to not be aboard the Black Ark uh, right now. Okay. I think that was just Ives' turn. So, uh, Darcy. Yes. What would you like to do? 
Oh, you're inside I the hole. I want to know like, about this, this room that I'm in. <laughs> I look around myself and I describe the room to myself. Yes. Uh, you step into the room and inside, as you might expect in the holds of a vessel like this, there are treasures untold of. Uh, treasure chests, uh, gold, riches, silk, spices, um, piled uh, as high higher than you can stand. It's, uh, there's a shit ton of people. Uh, so, shit ton of money in here. Secondly, bound and gagged and tied to a chair um, in uh, manacles is a dark elf, sorry, a high elf um, who is young, pale looking and terrified, but also gagged and manacled. Looks that's to have been beaten and tortured. Sorry? I thought that's my favorite kind of high elf. <laughs> but yes, exactly. Uh. <clears throat> I think I'm gonna go over and... Is he, like, bound to a chair, or are they bound to a chair? Yeah, he's bound to a... He's bound to a chair. Alright, uh, yeah, Darcy's gonna go over and... kind of change their binding so he's not fixed to the chair, just keep his arms bound, uh, fully release his feet. She'll kind of... There's a dagger at her side, so... He, he tries to escape this, she's gonna try and uh, restrain him, slash threaten him. So I imagine mm. I'm gonna have to make some sort of grapple check to so he doesn't just leap away the second I release him. Yeah, it. definitely. Does Dark Elf proficiency in BDSM help me here? Um, absolutely it does. It's unclear exactly how it helps you, but you feel like it definitely <laughs> does. <laughs> I'm gonna throw a quick knot, untying and retying, okay? Right. So it's, right, it's quick cool. bonds. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I'd like to try and do, is just release him from the chair, but keep him semi-bound, because uh, probably gonna have to keep moving, and I don't really want him getting away. Right, right. Um, yeah, you could roll me just like a strength, I guess, to keep him bound as you... I'll keep him like tied up as you, uh, keep the undo. Standard failure. But I'm nice. imitating as... intimidating as fuck, does that help? Um... Well, I'll give you a plus ten, I guess, for the, okay. uh, sure At which of... point, I would succeed. Sweet. The sheer amount of ropes, which are constantly being done and undone in Darcy's life, uh, serve her well <laughs> at this point. As um, you can keep him bound, but like unmanacled, uh, so he's uh, out of the chair. And you keep him gagged. Yeah, I don't really care what he has to say. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you have him. What yes. would you like? What would you like to do with him now? And this is as far as Darcy's plan went. Okay, <laughs> right. I'm in here with the treasure. Alright, I'm gonna get the guy, because he's like the most valuable thing in here. Now we've got the two dudes outside. I think she's gonna just drag him to the door, and she's gonna listen to the door. Because she has a feeling everyone else is gonna be coming down here eventually. So she's just gotta listen for the right moment to get through those doors and get, get gone. Okay, you can roll me a perception. I also only have good eyes, right? They don't have good ears. Oh, I mean, they have pretty good ears. I have kind pretty good ears. Kind of funny. Lots of room Sweet. for piercing. So they have been, you would suspect, ordered not to move out of here. So they are not going anywhere, but depending on how the fight goes, it could be possible, we suppose, that uh, they would no longer uh, be in place. Um, you hear a little bit of chatter between the two of them. I wonder what she's doing in there. Um, but I don't appear and to have gone anywhere. I'm gonna keep a good hold on the dude, and I'm gonna brace myself against the door as I imagine the boat sways rather dramatically in the storm. Mm -hmm. And that's the other dust time. Nice. Then we have the people who are fighting Ive, Geiger, and Nolgor. Actually, I think Ive's killed the one, so it's just yeah, Geiger and Nolgor uh, who are still in combat. So Geiger, a 35 is gonna hit. You can try and dodge that blow. Ooh, that'll do it. Nice. <laughs> and then uh, Jim. 
a 13. I've rolled 13 like fucking oh four times <laughs> so far. That's... Well, let's, let's see if uh, Nolgor can continue his uh, Matrix impersonation. Oh, no. <laughs> he does not dodge that one and will be hit. Uh, that is 11 points of damage to Nolgor's uh, right arm. 11 minus 4. Okay. He's going to take that damage then. Oof. He ah. finally breaks through your defense, sinking the blade, mm. the saber into your arm, and cutting pretty deep, coming away with red blood, yes, falling Damn. onto a slick floor. Yes. Uh, and so, with that, Nolgor is going to just, like, go into a frenzy. Uh, an all-out attack, which I believe gives you a plus 20 to hit, but also... Um, he has a penalty to yeah, any kind of open, defense, I think, yeah. uh, as well, yeah. So he's just like, ah! And let's see if this hits. Oh, 13 as well! Um, all right. <clears throat> and then... Oh, Kane is on my side! Yeah! <laughs> get uh, Let's see here. Uh, <laughs> That's 19 to uh, nice. location 31. How do you kill this man? <laughs> so that's his <laughs> right. I think he like he he takes the hit. Nolgor does, and just like something snaps in his mind, uh, and he just like grabs the cutlass two hand, cuts through the right arm, and then it like embeds halfway in his rib cage as he's like trying to pull it out as the rain and the water spout come uh, barreling down for the black arc. I love it. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, he is sailing off. And at this point, I need everybody on the ship, which is all of you, to roll me an agility check because the sea is coming alive and it makes it very difficult to keep your footing. Oh my fucking god, these rolls, except for Guy Gamers. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, the ship lurches suddenly in the storm as it's getting closer to this whirlwind of doom in the water. Um, and you see this huge spout of water fly out from uh, the whirlpool. At this point, the group of you hold your foot and grab onto something uh, while Geiger slips and falls. Uh, Can I fall down the does... stairs? <laughs> Actually, yeah, we'll roll... I want to roll the direction. Um, as does um, Fetin. So Fetin loses his feet footing as well. Um, and I want to, I'm going to roll a d2 on a one that you guys have fallen off, like you're falling off the side of the ship, and on a two you're falling down the staircase. Um, so that's a one. And so what basically what happens is Geiger and Fenton just get swept up in this wave which comes aboard the ship, and the two of them are uh, caught uh, just like hanging onto the side of the ship by their, you know, by their fingernails basically. And the two of them look to be in quite a spot of bomber. Fenton shouts out, Help us! And it takes us to Geiger's turn. Uh, okay, so Geiger is going, I guess, just going to try to climb back up on the ship. Alrighty. So you can try and do that with an agility check. Or strength. Agility or strength. I'll go with agility. Being a dark elf. Uh, I'm gonna actually... You know what? No, no, fuck this. I'm sorry. I've been trying to save my fortune points for, like, later. But I'm gonna go ahead and use one of those. Because this is bullshit. I basically have had a 50 50 all day. Oh my... Oh my god! I'm fine. Everything's fine. We're all fine here. Next. <laughs> so Geiger slips an inch. Um, Geiger slips an inch or two uh, as his fingernails are just like clawing in, but he's slipping with the water and the force of the ocean down there. <laughs> and Ive, uh, you see your friend and Fetin, both of them are, are pleading for their lives right now. Uh, so I kind of run over to the edge. Uh, so missing last last session, I'm still kind of up in the air. How inclined am I to want to save Fetin? Uh, pretty I'm inclined. Of the party. Yeah. Uh, pretty pretty inclined, inclined, sure. Sure. Um, 
Okay, I'll reach for Geiger first as he <clears throat> he looks like he's slipping and uh, I'm kind of presuming he's got a weaker grip. Uh, so I'm going to kind of hold down an arm and try and help him up. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, so do you have a plus 10 to this? This guy gets helping. You can run with a strength to pull him up here. Oh, that is quite a few degrees of failure. You send there. him to your death, <laughs> to his death. Uh, <laughs> you fucking kick him off the side and stamp on his feet. <laughs> I'm trying to help. Uh, no, you've like, you know, you are. You're right now. You're Sam, and Geiger is Frodo, and Fetten is Gollum, and <laughs> <laughs> it's. <laughs> it's all happening right now, uh, but you haven't quite pulled him up yet. You haven't started to believe in Mr. Frodo quite yet. Um, so you've got him by the hands, but you just don't have the strength to pull him all the way up yet. It's slippery, it's wet, the sea is churning, there's fighting going on, people are dying. Uh, okay, that's I, Darcy. You are below decks with a gagged and bound high up. As she continues to listen to the doorway, she's just basically holding here right now. There's not a good excuse to go okay. out until she hears them fall. Uh, but she may uh, like turn and whisper to him through the mask and ask, Who are you, elf? She's not going to call him a high elf, but she'll let me an elf. For the gag. And she reaches out like a black leather glove hand and just slowly pulls down the gag. And he like spits it out. <laughs> I will tell you nothing, foul creature. She shoves the gag back in his mouth and gets back Ooh. on with it. <laughs> yeah, he looks at you with real hatred and spite. He, you can tell, he's probably been tortured and slaves tend to get a little bit. Uh, bit of a nuisance when they've been tortured a little bit too much. Um, and she'll just whisper, remember, I gave you a chance to tell me. So and just continue a, waiting while the door. <laughs> there's a whole sub dong thing going on in the basement right now with this dude. And uh, I've set up deck, everyone's dying. Fetzen gets a chance to try and pull himself up. And he succeeds. Uh, and Fetzen pulls himself back up onto the, the deck at this point while Ive and Geiger are struggling. Um, <laughs> meanwhile, uh, Nogor has killed the uh, man who was fighting him, so the only real immediate danger is uh, Geiger falling to his doom in the ocean right now. What would you like to do, Nogor? Uh, Nogor's blood is up, and he's he himself is barely cognizant of who hired him and for what purpose. And um, he turns to what remains of his crew around him and are just like loot the ship and <laughs> loot, call it out call us out and they make for the <laughs> closest place uh, to acquire some uh, spoil <laughs> so he just starts like fucking panicking and he's like fucking still <laughs> it's like everybody's, into a... nobody's wearing any colors we don't know who anybody is we're going drinking <laughs> with them afterwards um uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's why if there's anyone in his way, he'll he'll fight them. Uh, but he's also heavily wounded or near heavily wounded, and uh, is. Do you want to like? Do you, I mean, you spot the the entrance into the holds. You could go down there if you wanted to. Yeah, he'll lead his crew. He'll lead whatever remains of his crew, and even like <laughs> others who might have surrendered, uh, right. who are just you know, let's go loot the ship. Uh, he's like something on their side down. now. <laughs> <laughs> something takes over. Tin. Uh, <laughs> So you run down, and uh, that's when you see the two guards who are at the uh, the hold guarding the door right now. Um, we'll cut back to Nogo. It takes your full turn to get down there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Geiger, you are being assisted by I. If you get a plus 10 on your agility check to pull yourself up. Fuck you! How about that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god. I'm going to use my last fortune point, oh my God. and I might, I might I rage quit the stream. I might quit I rage quit the stream. Will oh yes, yes. <laughs> I managed to successfully climb over the rail. Will, <laughs> proud of you, man. I'm proud. 
That was a big accomplishment. Just in time for another wave. No. Uh, so, so uh, <laughs> this flies right back up. Geiger pulls himself free with a little help from his friends uh, back onto the deck of the ship. And uh, I've, you have helped him. It's your turn. You watch as Nogor runs down below decks, looting as he goes. Kind of oh, yeah, super quiet again. Sounds good. Uh, I'll just that little bit further. Oh, yeah. He's been today, and I'm, I'm worried about that. Oh, you're going in and out. I saw, I heard something about Geiger, and then you got quiet again. So it's like a loose wire. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll switch uh, back to white here in a minute. Uh, Darcy, downstairs in the hold, you hear the distinct sound of pirates uh, coming towards the two guards and the sound of a charge about to happen. She is going to array that dagger in her hand, got the high elf in the other hand. Do these doors open inwards or outwards? Inwards. Inwards. So, dagger's now going to go between the teeth because she needs a hand to do this. And she's gonna grab the door handle and just. Well, she can't go between the teeth. Mm. It goes somewhere, and she'll just uh, keep <laughs> just, one door there open. There are flaps. There are there are yeah. pouches. There are presumably options. there are. Yeah. There's a whole lot of straps they could be sliding into. Uh, yeah. Just keep the door open and grab that dagger. Alrighty. And uh, high elf in the other hand. Sweet. Alrighty. Um. So that's. Uh. We'll hold. We'll see your action is held until no door. Does it surprise? So you guys can attack together. So Nolgor, you run down with your just band of like drunk pirates, basically, uh, towards these two guards, and at the same time, Darcy comes out to stab one in the side of the neck. Uh, what would you like to do? Um, he's charging. He, you know, this is sort of his. He sees this as his one moment to <laughs> make out like a bandit, <laughs> and he's just gonna <laughs> charge the uh, the two guards. Um, along with uh, whoever is uh, whoever will follow. Oh no! Not even with the charge bonus. Afraid not. Uh, he. I don't know what happens to Noldor, but he is not on it. Uh, not on his A game today. <laughs> he like throws up the halberd as Noldor brings down the sword. At the same time, Darcy, you can uh, you can surprise attack this dude. He's surrounded as well, so you can get a plus thirty percent on the attack as Noldor has him distracted. None of us are in our A game today, Jim. Uh, even with a plus 30, the dagger's not gonna do shit. <laughs> <laughs> today. Oh my god. I swear, like, today I've been rolling excellently, and players have not been having such a good luck. I recall so, there being uh, something about a whiff that people didn't like about 2nd edition. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't mind. I didn't mind. I didn't mind. <laughs> well, I the important thing is, well. it got fixed. <laughs> <laughs> If this was really situation, we'd still be working out rolls from like 20 minutes ago. How many How many success <laughs> levels on that? So, well, what I imagine happens is she goes to stab and the high elf squirms and the boat rocks. Mm. And the guy is like, what? And so she just misses really badly. Definitely. A swing and a miss uh, for Darcy Day. Geiger. Yeah, Fenton sort of like uh, grabs you back and it's like, You're right there, son. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, oh, looks, looks like something's uh, happening over here. And I'm going to try to lead him away from Blow Decks. Okay. Yeah, um, there's, there's plenty of stuff happening. Um, you yeah. both look over the side of the ship and uh, the whirlpool is just like sucking all of the enemy vessels into it, like all of the yachts and uh, and, and, and cruisers and barks that are, all, are just getting sucked inside this okay. whirlpool, and the black arc is as well. F Fenton, we ne need to, you need to get to the uh, to the captain's wheel. We need to we need to get the black arc away from that whirlpool. <sighs> he uh, he nods. Um, Come with me, and you can see that his arm has been wounded. Like he's got, uh, he's got a car. Now. Come, and he's like striding towards uh, the captain's wheel to try and pull her out. Okay, I'll go. I'll go with him, if only because I can keep him busy. Okay. Uh, so Gaia goes with him. Like he gets to the, the captain's wheel. And you're going to be instructing him on how to get out because it's sucking you guys in as well, quite worryingly. I, mm -hmm. you watch uh, Captain Fetton and Gaia Grandheart go together. What do you guys want to do? 
Uh, I will uh, head below decks because uh, Darcy's been under there for quite a, a decent amount of time, and I'm slightly worried that she's gotten into some bother. Uh, so as, as long as it's clear to the stairway, I'll kind of I'll jump down and try and listen out. Okay. Um, yeah, you jump down below decks, and you watch Nolgor and Darcy uh, murder hoboing. There's at least two dark elves who are on the hold, and there appears like there is a high elf prisoner that Darcy has strapped up in some kind of watch. Uh, he may have been that way in the first place. You can never tell. If, if everything okay? <laughs> I'm like in the midst of a fight right now. Like <laughs> I'm just like creeped around the corner. <laughs> we'll send it, Darcy. You can see it because like your back yeah. isn't turned around. She, she calls out dagger in one hand, high up in the other, Aye! And looks at Nogla, there be booty in there! <laughs> Just is hoping to get this high elf through the yeah. skirmish and distract them with the gold. You can see that the hole the back there is just brimming with gold. Aye! Clear the way for me! Oh. I've got I, your hands I was, full! I, I was gonna rip off his shirt and kind of bag this guy's head to try and disguise disguise him just trying because it's pretty fucking obvious that this he sticks out like a sore thumb right uh, so I'm, sure. I'm, I'm gonna put this shirt over the, his head and try and uh, pull him out like he's he's uh, just someone else yeah <laughs> you you tag him and bag him um, and <laughs> muffled screams from uh, <laughs> within uh, while Darcy and Nogba are fighting this man uh, that takes us to Darcy. You still have a plus 20 to kill this guy. He is surrounded and you're attacking him from, right, uh, yeah, from something he's not another, aware of. Another stab stab in the back. Ooh, that's more there we go. Um, I forget what a dagger roll is, so I unfortunately didn't add it to my sheet. Uh, it's a, just a straight bonus minus three. Yeah. Uh, straight bonus minus three? Okay, perfect. So mm. that'll be a straight roll. Seven. Ignore that plus one. And she's went all Okay, you do stab him. It's not quite enough to kill him, but he is wounded by it. Um, which is still something. Okay, yeah. You stab him, he screams in the chest uh, as you bring the dagger away. He's going to get the chance to fight back. He's going to try and turn on his heel to hit you, Darcy. Uh, okay. On a 59, which is going to be a miss for him. Uh, all right, he swings, he misses, and uh, around nine, Nolgor, you have another chance to murder this man. All right, so Nolgor is going to just uh, another uh, all-out attack. He's, he's got the his boys at his back. There's some elf in front of him. He, he doesn't know why, but uh, that's fine. And <clears throat> here we go, Mr. Uh, man. Oh no, that uh, that is a five points off of, uh, of it. Well, if he's got uh, people around him, then he would get a plus ten, which would turn this into a hit. That's yes, that's a hit. He's I got mean. he's got plus twenty from all out attack, and then yeah. uh, if he's and got if he's got boys, yeah. he's got boys, uh, and then I will take that. That's a oh sixty six body shot, <clears throat> and then eight to the body. Nice. Uh, she just like leans does... into it. Yeah. Yeah, you just. Does, run it, does it kill this guy? Him. Yeah, he's dead. Oh, yeah. He just like put, leans his weight into his cutlass. No finesse, no whatever. It's just, you know, uh, blood and guts below decks uh, fighting. And then he's like, ah, the treasure is there, boys. Uh, you know, he becomes an orc for a half second. Yeah, there's just like this <laughs> glimmer of gold in Nogor's eyes and the rest of the mm. pirates as they see the prize being so close. Um, <laughs> Geiger, you are with um, Captain Fetton. What would you like to do? Um, <clears throat> well, I, I, I assume he's going for the wheel. Uh, he is, yeah. Uh, so I'll, I will... Uh, I'm, I'm going to do one of two things. Uh, is this like a standard kind of ship where it's like up near the back and yeah, kind of yeah. look over the edge and all that. So I'm basically mm -hmm. going to try to watch his back, but also kind of looking over the edge, looking for a vessel that's uh, on the opposite side of the Black Ark from the Maelstrom uh, right. for a way out of here. Yeah, you, there are some vessels which are still being pulled in, but are sort of like bobbing up against the Black Ark because they're on the wrong side. 
Um, okay. So there are vessels down there that you could jump into. It's just having the strength to pull it away from the, the force of the maelstrom. Right, right. Okay, well, uh, he's going to just keep those in mind while uh, watching Fenton's back. Um, so if anybody is up here or near, then he'll he'll try to cut him down. But other than that, he's just looking at the the stairway going down to the cargo hold and keeping an eye on the boat and just kind of keeping those two things in mind. Okay. Um, I've there's still one guard who is uh, fighting, but you do have the high elf tagged and bagged. Um, what would you like to do with him? You don't necessarily have to get involved in the fight. You could probably move past him if you wanted to. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to try and get this guy out. He seems to be our main focus and our main prize. It's not worth risking the entire uh, integrity of this operation uh, for one man. Um, so what I'll do is, is try and get him up uh, on deck, um, being mindful of... Did, did I see uh, where Geiger went? Did I see which direction? Yeah, you saw him at the the, the head of the uh, the ship, yeah. Yeah, so if I come out the doors that I I went down, am I likely to kind of full on expose where we've uh, who we've got with us or There's a lot of chaos on the ship right now. Um, okay, yeah, I'll I'll just push him up the way we came because I know he's, well, hopefully that dinghy's still going to be there uh, for us to escape him. <laughs> Pray for the dinghy. Uh, sure. Um <laughs> You push him up, and he, you know, he goes as you tell him. Uh, I'll, I'll give him an elbow in the bag as well, just to, so he knows who's boss. Which bag? <laughs> the head bag. <laughs> sure. The pants. Don't know if he's specific enough. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how's he doing that with the elbow? How's he getting around? Yeah, okay. Uh, that makes sense. So <laughs> that is. <laughs> the old elbow reach around. Darcy, uh, your turn. Uh, what would you like to do? Uh, I want to follow I uh, defend his rear and our, <laughs> our prize. And then I guess get up onto the deck and fight whoever I need to fight. Get the crew together and not be on the and... ship that's swaying this badly anymore. <laughs> right, right, okay. <laughs> so so you... the craft and not in the sea, well, to be specific. Sure, I wasn't clear on that. I was just, just, just into the maelstrom. Yeah, um, so uh, Darcy and I, with the high elf, uh, get above deck, and it's still pandemonious chaos. They're trying to pull the ship away from the maelstrom, is the main thing right now. Looking over the side of the ship, there are like these ten vessels getting pulled uh, in and under the, uh, the ocean. There's this whirlpool swirls uh, ever further around. Um, and you can see Captain Fetin at the head of the ship, along with uh, Geiger, who appears to be like, you know, pointing and gesticulating wildly about the way which he needs to go. Um, and yeah, that's where you guys see as you get at the top. And let's oh, see. Oh, can I do uh, one thing? Yeah, go ahead. I want to put the ma my mask on the high elf. And pull the bag out the way a little bit, put the mask on over the top of the gag. So. It kind of, you know, she's kind of masking him as her in a way. So the bit, oh, it's the mask. That's Darcy. And it's kind of, you know, less conspicuous than there's someone looking around with a bag on their head. We might need to ask questions right. about this. So, so this dude is great. Like he's like he was manacled, he was gagged, he had a bag over his head. Now he has a mask on top of the bag, over the bag on his head, and uh, <laughs> he's just like really decked out in various different accoutrements. Um, sure, you like, throw the mask. I'm a woman with specific tastes, Will. <laughs> yeah, thank okay. you. Right, right. So, <laughs> so that is Darcy's turn. Um, we'll still go around around ten to Nolgor. Um, I'm guessing there's a plundering happening here. Nolgor. Yeah, you know, Nolgor grew up uh, hard scrabble on the docks of Nagarond. Uh, you know, lower class dark elves. I mean, they might still be dark elves, but it's you know it's pretty bad. So this is more money than he's ever seen ever, period, many times over, uh, and it's a, uh, they take as much of it as they can, uh, now the next question is what happens, what afterwards? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you guys go in, you're probably gonna spend a turn just looting this shit, one of, yeah, the other, yeah. you know, one of your pirates murders the other guard fairly easily, you just <laughs> round him and butcher him, um, and there is just, I mean, chests upon chests upon chests, um, so anyway, chest too much uh, of just gold and diamonds and booty and 
just any imaginable, you know, spice or jewel which Nolgor could hope to ever seen before. More than you could possibly carry out. Nolgor starts swallowing diamonds and loading his uh, <laughs> pockets down with uh, coins. Sweet. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> you gra- you got to spend a time just grabbing. Yeah, he's stuff. just wow. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's just eating gold. So I he imagine can- <laughs> on, the, on the side of one of these jewels is like choking hazard. Do not swallow. <laughs> Do not swallow. Yeah, yeah. No, no more chokes to death on the gemstones. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> All right, that's no cost. To, just eating rubies is the one way he'd like to go out. Uh, all right, Geiger. Um, you see Eve, Darcy, and a high elf who's now in a mask uh, appear on deck, and you know, uh, Fetton's way too busy to. To really be tracking what's going on. Okay, uh, so he's gonna he's he's behind Fenton and uh, he's gonna yell out something to hopefully make him look the opposite direction. But he's like trying to make eye contact with 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 Darcy, just kind of wave his sword and just kind of point to the side where uh, he has. There's a there's a ship over here, basically like head over there, you know. But he's gonna start right, putting right. the bug in Fenton's ear like. <sighs> The Black Ark may be lost. We might have to make a break for it, Fenton. Oh, let's see. You could roll me a couple of things already. Whatever you thought would be, whatever you think would be best. I mean, it could be intimidation, but I think you're trying to necessarily make it scared of you. Um. What? What? what it, uh, no. I was gonna try to try to angle for intimidation, basically talking about how insane this so- this uh, storm is to make him scared more of the storm. Uh, but mm. I don't know, like that's that sounds like it's more of a charm or a. Uh, it feels like a charm. Anyway. Yeah. yeah, it feels like yeah. a, you know, listen to reason. Yeah, uh, yeah, I failed that. I was, I had sixteen percent chance. So, but anyway, <laughs> it's more just like. That's that's yeah, that's yeah. just like the backup plan. So he's like trying to get Darcy and I to head over uh, to that opposite side, away from the maelstrom. Right, right. He's you know it's unclear how much attention he's paying to you because you know he's in a panic scenario right now. But uh, you certainly haven't managed to quite get through to him yet. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, I've uh, I guess Ivan Darcy because you guys are like with each other and acting in and so on. Ive, uh, guy goes bring it out, ship. And she'll explain to Ive the way we should go to get to a craft. Yeah, I'll follow along. I'll be kind of keeping an eye out. Has, has the number of uh, like people trying to get on the boat uh, subsided? I'm guess I'm guessing with the big water spout, they're trying to kind of just live at this point in time. Yeah, people are like scrambling just to be on the black arc because if you're in the water, you're just dead now at this point. Um, so people are scrambling on but they're not really fighting so much they're just like holding on for dear life yeah i imagine we're kind of wake working away through the crowd like um i'm just not really taking prisoners though so even if someone's kind of holding on for dear life in front of him and they're in his way he's kind of he's cutting them um he's like cutting their wrists where they're holding on just so they get out of the way uh, we're just trying to make our way through nice uh, sweet. And so, are you going towards Geiger? Or are you going somewhere right, else? we're going towards the a sh- ship that's nearby, like one of the smaller boats. Sure, not sure, yeah. Nelson, like, Geiger's rest. pointing towards one, yeah. Okay. Um, so, if I'm busy slashing, I'll keep hold of the high elf. If I have hold of the high elf, I'll try and figure out how we're going to get down into a boat in the middle of a storm. Okay, that yeah, there are awesome. ropes that lead down there, but it's, uh, you know, I'll stress that is incredibly dangerous down there. It seems like the Black Ark itself is having trouble pulling out, so mm-hmm. a smaller vessel looks like a dangerous yeah. game, but you can get to the side of the boat. Um, do you guys want to rappel down? Do we want to check the High Elf down first? It's a pretty High good elf. fall. It could, it could kill him, but maybe not. Could we tie a rope around his ankle or something like that? What if we did it yeah. so, like, we use his bones as, like, a rope slide thing? Just yeah, well, have him what I'll do... I'm familiar with that, I guess. I'll do, I'll do the, I'll do the German knot round his his manacles, and I'll throw him down. You know, the like, we did that time, Will. The German um, sex dungeon knot, yeah. Y- yeah, that one, yeah. The the half tussle. 
Um, mm. I'll give him the full shouser. Um, 100% him. <laughs> so a, ro oh. a rope around his buns and we'll toss him like a half elf, elf yo yo uh, and hopefully try and land him in the yacht. If not, pick him up and try yeah. again. Okay, so you slung him downwards. Uh, you could roll me a. <laughs> A slung roll? A slung roll. What's my slongage skill? Um, yeah. <laughs> Strength. It's an errata. Uh, you want a strength check? That's not great. I yeah. can do it. Uh, 46, Did that's one degree of failure. I give you the plus 10 for Darcy being there, so that would make it. That's dead on then. Yeah, so um, you, <laughs> you tie a German knot around his ankle and um, the Germanic nature of that knot holds true as <laughs> you throw him down. <laughs> and he lands, I guess he doesn't land in the ship, he's like held taut. <laughs> as, uh, <laughs> the ridiculousness of that sentence for a second. Uh, so he's like standing about like, I guess, He's caught about five feet above the ship, and then you can, like, lower him down from there. Yeah, can we, like, lower him just enough so he hangs onto the ship? Like, Before like he you lower on... him, maybe I should go down there to help him sit nicely in the boat. What? So just let me lower him a touch till he's grabbing hold of this boat for literally his life's sake, and then I'd like to slide down on the rope like a zip line. <laughs> I think it's... Is he still manacled? Yeah, but he's there, there together. This, what the hell is this? He's still got his fingers and toes. <laughs> this grabbing onto a boat motion, the universal sign for grabbing like a, onto a boat. <laughs> like a Venus, like a Venus flytrap. <laughs> yeah, he's just like <laughs> stop, drop, and roll. And if you're on a boat, just fucking grab it. <laughs> Um, he's gonna make a check to try and grab on. Uh, that's a plan. And he does not succeed. So he, he's like, he's like falling into the ocean. He's like barely grasping onto, you know, the German knot at this point. Uh, someone's gonna need to go down there and grab him. Yeah, so I'll just take off one of my belts and just zip line down. Just gonna zip mine down. Alright, uh, you can roll me now, Julie. Yeah. Yeah! Yeah. Nice. So you, uh, zip line down, uh, and jump onto the, the vessel, which isn't much more than a, like a long boat, really, I guess. Yeah. Um, Alright. Do you want to pull him up? Yeah, I definitely want to try and pull him. I don't want him to drown. That would really be counterproductive to everything we've tried so far. <laughs> that's, that's true. Uh, so yeah, and he's got my you, up, so I kind of want that back. That's true as well. Yeah, that thing's doing well to stay on. Okay, uh, that is Dusty's turn. Oh yeah, uh, Ive, did you want to rappel down there at the same time? Uh, so I'll probably hold for this turn just for Darcy to sort okay. shit out. I don't want to go down there if it's not sorted. <laughs> I don't really want to get on a boat that isn't sorted. It does just fucking sort it out down there, right? She's taking care of her business. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to fuck with her. <laughs> just hate all the robes and the oars. It's just a lot of work. All right. Um, the Black Ark begins to onerously pull itself away from the vortex. Um, Nolgor, you have just stuffed your body in every conceivable uh, meaning of the word. Um, yeah. With uh, jewels, riches, and gold, and you're just carrying, you know, this like chest of of plunder. Uh, what do you do once you have all that you can carry and ingest? Is the nearest is the entrance that we came down? Is that like the nearest way up? That's the nearest one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then he's gonna, you know, a skilled uh, seaman and uh, you know, the like. He's going to rush up on deck and, you know, which side is the maelstrom on? Which, are there any ships that we can yeah, right, use? Right. Just we'll say that you spot Ive at that point, then, if you wanted to go with Ive. Oh, well, do we see Fetton at that point as well? So, uh, yes, um, Fetton is at the helm, and he's with Geiger right now. Um, so Ive appears to be, like, helping someone rappel down onto another boat. Um, 
But taking a look at the boat, it might not be big enough for all of you and your guys and all of the shit that you're carrying. So you might need to get on your own vessel. I think Nolgor at this point considers his obligation uh, satisfied and um, is, is going to lead his crew on a, on a boat that uh, will get them out of there. And they're making for the south shore. That. They're not going to go back to Nagarond. They're like, screw yeah, that. Yeah. We'll go to some other oh, city. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I love the idea that Nogo is like, he was hired to pretend to be a raider and to kill all of the actual raiders, and then he just went wild and became a raider. <laughs> what? He, they, <laughs> we switched up the plan on him mid mid planning, and so he just got confused once he took up eight wounds. <laughs> it's a simple man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. God. Clear instructions, yeah. Okay, so uh, you can roll me a agility to zip line down. Uh, I guess you toss all of your gold and treasures first. So yeah, we'll, we'll get all our, our business there oh, too. Maybe, yeah. He like, back bonus. of the cutlass, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Harold Flynn's out of there, he's, yeah, he's just mm. all the way down. All right, so uh, Noel goes on his own ship. And it's actually the ship is right next to Ive and Darcy. It's one, so Nogor just lands in a pile of gold and, and jewels with the rest of his pirates and troubadours. <laughs> uh, You're the welcome! Land just, like, shakes gold out of them. Right. Yeah. Um, Geiger, what would you like to do at this point? <laughs> just imagine the pirates hitting and, like, Mario getting hit by something. Every time they just, like, <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. Uh, Geiger, uh, seeing his perfect opportunity to extricate himself from Fenton, he sees all these raiders coming out from below deck laden with treasure. And he yells out, The lower decks have been breached! I will go, I'll go get them! Get, get the ship back! And he'll make a show like, you know, and he's gonna start yeah. heading down, running, actually, like he's gonna go after the borders. Uh, and eventually he's going to, uh, slip over decks. Uh, over the all right, you can roll me. No, you can roll me a stealth check to uh, to get away, um, and I'll give you a plus twenty because it's not like guy goes really uh, concealment. Yeah, concealment. Yeah, sweet. I actually have that skill. Are you fucking? You? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Seventy-four. Can we try so and crew we'll out say this. he's not helping? He, he, <laughs> Fenton doesn't stop you from doing this, but there is a moment where you're about to rappel down, where the two of you just, like, lock eyes, and he knows that you've been trying to evade him. Like, there's no question in your mind that Fenton has understood what you are trying to do here. He doesn't stop because he's, like, fucking busy getting the ship out from a maelstrom, but uh -huh. there's just a glare between the two of you that you know that he knows. And then he can give me an agility check to jump off the ship. Well, I'm sure I'll roll a one on this. Yep. <laughs> no, whatever. <laughs> Aft. Yay. Yep, you, you zip line down and <laughs> land next to Ivan Darcy. The saltiest sailor. Alright, let's, <laughs> all right, let's get the fuck out of here. Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, like, this, this place is bad. All the bluster's <laughs> gone. He's just like despondent and just like fuck it. Just fuck it. I don't know what the fuck this place is, but it's not good. You've got yeah, like a so... bucket stuck on your foot and stuff like, like yeah. stuff you've not even noticed how clumsy you are. I noticed like half my first draft of the Art of the Kill is, is waterlogged and just like washed away. And it's just like he throws the rest of it overboard. It's like it's all up here. Absolutely. So the, the Black Arg is pulling its way out from Darcy, Ivan, Geiger. I'd like you all to make me a road check. Yeah, I was gonna say... And because you're all together, I give you plus 20% on these two girls. Alright. Alright. Geiger passed? Baby. Darcy didn't pass. Ive did not. Uh, with a plus 20, I think you do. Yeah. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah, so that's a uh, Geiger and I, Darcy still just misses. Um, but the two of you have enough weight behind you to pull out um, the, uh, you know, the little rowboats that you're in away from the black car. Probably following in the, it's like the slipstream of it for a while so that you can, you know, go with the, the ward less moving you out of it and pull yourselves away. Um, no, go, you can give me a road check at uh, plus 20% as well. That 
is not so hot. Um, so Nolgor and his men, this is hilarious, Nolgor and his men are getting left behind as Geiger and Darcy just like pull away of their ship along with the Black Ark. And Nolgor's, uh, you, know, you guys are fighting, Our Kevin, there's too much booty! As you're getting pulled towards the male shroom. Strong. Uh, Who said that? What are you that? talking about? There's Who never too that? much booty. And he kicks them off the boat. If, he, if the guy's like... <laughs> 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 Slam him off the boat. Um, he goes flying in a shatter of gold and, and diamonds. Um, <laughs> and he's immediately drowned in the maelstrom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, whatever uh, pointlessly uh, stupid death that Volcor needs to have, he can, but he'll try. As long yeah, as no, yeah, you got a, right. at least one other chance here. Uh, uh, plus thirty percent, having lost some weight. Bro, <laughs> go, go ahead and make another one. Yeah, I gave him a road check plus thirty. All right, I believe. Here we go. Here, I that would be right. that's enough. Yep, that'd be enough. <laughs> Just barely. That's enough. So no go and his men. Uh, and we're gonna say that like free, you throw like three more people overboard but, <laughs> <laughs> by the time you. Why you get Your weapon's not even bloody. He throws them off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like covered in blood. Not bloody enough. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is never too much booty. It's always too many pirates. So <laughs> go, go, did, go, the gold doesn't weigh anything. It's yeah, it's the elves. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you just um, sail away, and you're like headed in the other direction. You're, you know, you're off to the. It's like headed uh, for like south. Claire or what, Clar, Carond, whatever is down there. Carond, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There's more money than you've ever seen in your life. So this is like payday for for Nolgo. Like mm. he's like two weeks away from retirement now, and this is everything he needs to retire on. So um, too old. He's too old for this shit. He's too old exactly. for it. You know, like so like this wound Darcy, is gonna fester. It's gonna bother him the rest of his yeah. life. Absolutely. Uh, so Darcy, <laughs> Ivan, Geiger. The three of you are going to escape with the High Elf. Um, where would you like to go? Which direction would you like to head in? Hmm. My if you can imagine, you're pretty much like in the Bay of Nagaron right now. So, you know, you're My like... My suggestion we, would be the shitty end of the docks. But. Yeah, well, we need, I, I would say maybe not even to the exact docks of Nagaron. Somewhere just outside of is town. There, is there like a sewer, a large sewer output into the sea, and we can kind of head to the there? Probably really by the docks, really. Um, but you, I mean, like, you know, you could stop your ship outside of the city before you get to the docks, and like just pull up on land, you know, where the Road of Skulls is or the Chill yeah. Road, and just like park, you know, basically park the boat somewhere on land. That's not going to be immediately. Uh, noticeable. That's what you guys would like to do. Yeah, unless it's yeah. underground canals. I would like underground canals. Uh, they <laughs> possibly yeah. are. Um, but, um, yeah, you need to get to the docks to get to them. Okay. You guys land then a couple of hours later on the beach. And what do you three do? And you, you, know, you guys are bloodied and <laughs> wounded and the plan, however, seems to have worked, dare I say, flawlessly. Almost. In some levels. <laughs> <laughs> A couple of levels. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Darcy, uh, I suppose you could have a look at this leg here uh, when you have a moment, but uh, what have you gotten out of this one? And he kind of like kicks the, kicks the high elf, you know, like in the flank. He's an eye elf, that's about all I got. Mm. None too polite, but that's the way they go. Oh. That is, uh, that is the way of things with their kind. <laughs> eye elves are known for their rudeness. In yeah. dark elf society. It's a chilling rope with them, actually. Do you yes. reach out and snatch mm. that mask off of him, pulling the bag with it, so his face is exposed, and Geiger can check him out? He's and he'll do that. Uh, He's been wounded, but he hasn't been so badly wounded as like really hurt him. Um, you know, he's he's clearly faced some some torture, 
uh, but nothing that's really going to like completely uh, debilitate, uh, destabilize, or you know, like there's no wound which is going to fester and kill him or anything like that. He's had a pretty easy go of it, which is maybe a little bit strange. Hmm. We're gonna need a place to stash him. Even for a high elf, he had some. Um, <laughs> He's probably extra disgusting to you because he's extra haughty and quite a handsome high elf. Fairly young as well, even by your standards. Can I, with the hilt of my dagger, just fucking break his nose? Out of jealousy and frustration, just pop him on the end of the nose. Absolutely. And I'm gonna... Oh, oh, creatures. And I want to give Ive a dead arm for doing that. <laughs> He's mine! It's just I am one of I those stuck of yours. So stuck up. Look, look at the way he looks at us. Yes, they think they're better, but they are nothing but dirt. <laughs> Who and uh, Geiger's, go Geiger's gonna check uh, check this guy's clothes, like you know everything about him. Like try to get a gauge of of what he is, a noble yeah, he, I mean, soldier. He's been, yeah, he's been on the sea for a long time. If he's you know if they capture him somewhere in Uthlan or on the high seas, but um, his robes were now tattered and um, you know ruined. Uh, were once noble, for sure. This guy is someone, and you also notice that he. Uh, bears the insignia of a white lion. Would we know the significance of that? I would say that uh, you would. Uh, they are hated enemies, uh, the white lions of Trace, um, who are seen as like personal bodyguards to the Phoenix King. So this guy would be, you know, really someone. So they're the equivalent of your black guard of Nagarond. You know, Malekith has those badass dudes. These are sort of the badass guys of the High Elves. So a big we prize. We can't take him back to the sea. No. Listen, my people have money, as does my father. It's I really want to the bag want. back into his mouth, because he's interrupting the adults who are talking. Mm. Well, that's how Darcy sees it. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you uh, sub camp out here outside the city? Now I'll go get Golazal and we can move on from there. Yes, uh, should be careful. Because I don't really like the, uh, the look that Fenton gave me when I was departing the ship. I think he might be on to us. Not sure. But keep a keep an eye out. Right. Um, does this like as he hears us talking? Does he show any reaction to the name Fenton? Uh, he yeah, his ears prick up. So you're not working. Oh no, he's gagged. Yeah, so his ears just pick up. Mm -hmm. yeah. We should probably uh, ask a few questions first. All right. Uh, well, I tend to Geiger's leg. Yes, please. I, I try to ignore his chittering. I hate the cadence of his voice. Sing-songiness. Uh, I'll pull the gag out of his mouth. Uh, you recognize the name? He was the one who captured me. You don't work for him, though. I can tell that much. Um, how about we are the ones asking questions? We're the ones deciding. I'll ask whether you a question, be. Dark Elf. Insert I'll buff him on the en end of his nose. I'll <laughs> break his nose at another point. Yeah. Booper Snoop. <laughs> <laughs> and there's this more bloody, you know, stump comes away. I, I'm you're, trying to concentrate. You're uh. running out of nose to break. Um. Why? <laughs> Why were you not sold? What, what did he tell you? Tell me anything. She said I was coming back and that I would be a great prize for the Witch King. 
What's so special about you, lion? He like holds his chin up high, clearly very proud. My father is Corhill, personal bodyguard of the Phoenix King. I am his son, Falafir. Who? <laughs> Sorry, no, how do you? Oh, that's. Oh. We love the South Sea, Falafiers. <laughs> that's South like when I'm like, oh, I'm a Twitch streamer, and they're like, oh, cool, who are you? And I'm like, what's, what's oh, I'm on the Indie channel. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. I had someone say, uh, someone was like, oh, so you know Destiny? And I was like, no, I don't. We <laughs> <laughs> all hang out in the Twitch lounge together. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, no, I've got this friend called Gareth, though. <laughs> <laughs> There's a guy, his, his name's Gareth. <laughs> They're like, oh, yeah, him. <laughs> Sorry, I'm on Crime Watch. Um, so, um,. <laughs> He, so, um, for some reference, Corhill is the, as he mentioned, the personal bodyguard of the Phoenix King. He runs the White Lions of Trace, who are this, like, elite bodyguard unit of dudes who are, you know, fight to the death, and they are, like, truly hated by you guys, because they're really good. I still go with the who, just to... Yeah, yeah, like, just to annoy uh, to, in a metaphorical way, put his nose out of joint, rather than the two ways that mm. I have actually put his nose out of joint. Worth a lot of. Does not surprise me. That you are not learned enough to recognise Lord's name when you hear it. Uh, by the time I'm done with you, not many people will recognise you, and I point to his nose. You'll be a fool to harm me any further. The Why? Witch King wants his prize. I mean, as long as your heart has a few beats in it, that's all that matters. You think that he wants me damaged? Why did Fetton keep me this way for so long? He is you a fool. To speak with lots of knowledge of this Witch King. Have you spoken to him? Maybe Fetton was speak. sweet on you. Demons. Aye, I heard that about Fen. Strange tastes. Mm-hmm. He shrugs. I do not... Ooh. I do not pretend to understand the wicked hearts of you creatures. Mm-hmm. Perverse nature of yourselves. So fallen from grace. Mm-hmm. I, I lean over and take a look at his broken nose and I just, like, fix it back in place with a nice satisfying cartilage crunch. Oof, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Heal our right as rain. Guy Gar <sighs> here a leg that's not what I can do about it on the beach. Ugh. Then what is to be my fate? You going to kill me if you do it? Do it quickly. Oh, yeah. As I mentioned, my Nothing father has through. great amounts of money. More of gold than you could possibly imagine. What about you? What worth are you? Why would he give out gold for just you? I am his son. Weak little boy in a hold. No weak boy. I took down 20 of your creatures before they finally overwhelmed me with sorcery. That fetin of yours commands dark powers. He hides it well, but... He is a sorcerer of dark magics, whatever demons it is you all worship. Don't you worry, your nightmares won't harm you. And she just pats him on his head. Even now, my father will be sailing a vast navy of vessels to come and free me. How is he going to find you? Maybe, maybe we should leave a trail. I'm gonna grab his hand and lop off his little finger. Oof. He's, 
He bites I down don't into have his my tongue. Sewing kit. <laughs> I'm, I'm then gonna take the finger and just throw it into the ocean. There's one piece. Ugh. Monster. Darcy's gonna give Geiger a look like, please stop him from doing more damage to our prize until we figure out what we're doing with it. <laughs> so you should take that to heart, elf. Don't back talk us. Don't give us any lip. Don't give us any attitude. Or you'll lose more pieces. And the fish of Nagaron Bay will feed plenty tonight. <laughs> He, like, shuts up now that his finger's been lopped off. There you go. Uh, and Geiger's gonna start uh, a bit of a fire, a, l a, l a very small one. Uh, just sure. enough to uh, heat his dagger and uh, carterize the wound, the, the, the mm -hmm. finger. Yeah, he winces, um, but is uh, nonetheless sort of appreciates the help. Um, well, yeah, as we're mentioning in our chat here, like, male sorcerers, if Fetin is, in fact, a sorcerer, that would be outlawed by the Witch King, and he would be punished to death for that, so... And we're not super worried about that, though, because we do know that Fetin is sponsored by mm -hmm. Mummy of the Witch King, who is also oh, yeah, super but... powerful. Yes, that would also mean that she is allowing uh, something very unlawful to take place. Perhaps... Mm -hmm in order just to piss off the Witch King, or perhaps something else. Well, on this beach, is there any sort of um, sheltered area where we could kind of set up like a temporary little camp situation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can at least travel uh, far enough to, uh, to find some shelter. Maybe we could even turn the boat itself into some sort of shelter, carry it with us, break it up for wood, whatever we need to do. Yeah. Okay. That works for me. You guys can take a rest. Okay. Because uh, in Darcy's mind, I don't think... Presumably take to keep an eye on yeah. yeah. I don't think going back to the city is a great idea, since she's already had one assassin sent after her, and that was before we started stealing things from other people's ships. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, can we yeah. kind of stand far enough away we can chat without this guy overhearing everything sure. we're saying? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what... what what part of the plan was next? <laughs> well, this is the thing. We have the prize now, so... Who do we want to uh, make happy? Perhaps... We should reach out to Simon first. Let him know we did what we could to hold back the Black Ark. Hope mm -hmm. the damn ship doesn't make it out of the storm. Hmm. I think that Fenton uh, had already turned it. It was it was making a little bit of headway away from that storm, so I wouldn't be shocked if we see him again. Which would be a problem, because we know that Fenton is one of Sivan's boys. Or maybe the other way around. I was a little confused about who was whose. Well, Tops and bottoms and all that. Yes, I'm not sure who is the top and who is the bottom, but they are in deep with one another. And, uh, how far... <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> <clears throat> but yes. We have another problem. If Fenton now possesses <laughs> magic, that makes him a greater opponent than we ever considered. I wish for yes. we have a bargaining chip to get his favor back. If that one was intended for, as a gift from him to the Witch King. Hmm. Maybe you're trying to buy a little favor with the Witch King? A little get out of jail free card. Makes sense. I mean, uh, when, when we think about what we've just done and the incredible odds and how we still managed to come out on top by seemingly placing all of our eggs in one basket at the same time. Why don't we invite two or three parties interested in this fellow to the same place and let them have a chat about why they're all interested? There's a few people that seem to be 
not being completely open and honest with everyone. You mean like us? Yeah, well, I mean, I mean uh, but, but it's, we're dark. We're dark elves. Like, uh, what? Honest? What's that so, word? It's the whole thing. It's like my hotel. <laughs> we also have an opportunity here of our own to win favor mm -hmm. with our dear king. I true. paid my tithe, but that doesn't I mean mine. I don't want more favor. What happens if we, we uh, sneak him into the city? What happens if we sneak him in the city? We present him to the Witch King ourselves. Or offer that the Witch King come and collect him. I believe if we bring him into the city, we invite nothing but more trouble. This is Too true. Too many eyes that work for Fetten. Hmm. As, as, as long as we can leave out the detail where I chopped off his finger. I'll consider it. Well, that's that's on you, my friend. Uh, but at least we did help him afterwards. <laughs> I don't need to get I mean, swept up in the moment. He, 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 he was talking back to me. I, I don't feel he respected me, so I just... Tried. If you like, I could cut off one of yours and sew it onto his hands. <laughs> and he'll still have mm. ten fingers. Just one really pale one. <laughs> like, j just for a second, the thought thought goes through Ivor's Ivor's head, and he's just like, I, I, I don't think that would work. Are you sure you're really a doctor? Yes, but I'm also super tempted to hurt you right now. <laughs> you sound like all my friends. <laughs> Speaking of our friends, I still believe Golazal should be. Uh... <clears throat> Informed of changes, he's vulnerable back in the city. Yes, it's very true. You have assassins looking after you. I have an injured leg. Maybe, uh, I've maybe you could go into the city, fetch him, bring him back to us. What do you think? I, I mean, I, uh, yes, well, well, why not? I'm, I'm, I'm sure no one will look for me. I'm fairly inconspicuous. I'm still, I've not got a shirt on. I'm just walking yeah. around completely topless, <laughs> covered in high elf blood. Um, well, uh, that's the fashion right now. <laughs> well, also Sorry. the black arc is slow moving, so uh, they won't even be back for a while. So perhaps you could slip in and out before they even know uh, you were there. Right, I'll, I'll, I'll set off straight away. Um, give me. How far away does, are we, roughly? Uh, several miles. Out of the city stuff. That's not terrible. Uh, give me uh, three hours and thirty-seven minutes, uh, and then he just sprints off. And Geiger checks the position of the sun <laughs> to know exactly when three hours and thirty-seven minutes is passed. <laughs> I have does like one hour miles or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So once Ive is gone. Darcy and Geiger are left with Felafir, the High Elf. What happens then? You just <clears> see him <throat> sprinting off. Hmm. What do you think, Geiger? <laughs> I was considering the fact that maybe you sent off Ive so that you could have a conversation <laughs> <laughs> together about him. <laughs> oh no, that's the first thing I'm like. Listen, <laughs> you can't cut any more like, pieces. We're, we're, we're not being honest with each other. Yeah, I. Why don't you go and uh, <laughs> run off and yeah. go as all? Well. <laughs> but seriously, Darcy, what do you think our play should be? Do we throw him with Fellhan? I have no interest with Fell out. He offers us nothing. This is true. With the straight arrows, we could take the house. A fallen house, but still a house. With the, with the king, we could take a city. This is true. And for all we know right now, the uh, everybody will think that the Shade Arrows had a failed raid on the Black Ark. They're going to fall out of favor, even more so. And they're going to fall fast. So... How do we play it, though? We need to find a place to hold up with this guy. Do you know anybody outside the city? 
Do I know anyone outside the city? Or? Um, <laughs> outside, <laughs> outside of the city, let's see. Would we, okay, so we came off of a big black arc with a ton of people. Would we, maybe there's some sort of outrider types that were with us who maybe don't live in the city, who have moved out, or maybe mm -hmm. someone I went to school mm -hmm. with when I was learning to be a doctor, or... I mean, so you could go to Grond, which is north of here, which is uh, a fun place to go. I think Marafi lives actually, let's see. Or is she in Harganeth? She's uh, Harganeth, I think. Harganeth, yeah. Uh, she is the Sorceress of Grond in the first line of Queens. Okay, maybe she's lived there. Yeah, it's where our summer home is. It could be a summer house, yeah. She is the Sorceress of Grond, that is her title, so maybe she just fucking has a tower there. <laughs> it's where she does her taxes. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's, the, it's the tax haven. Well, either way, I mean, Grond or Harganeth are both uh, places where the Shmurathi <laughs> may be at any given time. Let's say she's in a summer home right now in Grond. Um, she's fucking chill there. Um, well, that wouldn't be a good place to go if we'd just stolen something from her, one of her pets. It's mm, very true. Um, I then there's the great arena, which is I as you would... looking an opportunity to make a deal with the king's mother. If tides in their game are changing. You certainly make Anyways, a valid point. Someone is going to want to kill us. And we've got to move quick and make a decision. I've, I'm sure we can twist to go whichever way we want. Galarzal doesn't much care unless there's profit in it for him, so we have to find that option. Mm -hmm. And I'm in mind with him on that too. Yes, yes. Hmm. The question is, do we make a deal with the devil or his mother? That's the way I see it. Personally, she scares me more. If I can use that word, if I'm using it in the appropriate sense. I. She scares me worse, a... too. Yes, I think it would be interesting to see her reaction to all of this. Mayhap she has some spell she would like to work in order to strike at the Phoenix King. Maybe that's why Fetton was trying to retrieve that one. All right then, we cut out the middleman, we go to ground, and we go to Grand. Right, we go to Grand. Yep, I think that's a solid plan. Nothing's gonna <laughs> okay. go wrong. We're not going to an even worse just... person that we could have gone to anywhere else. Are you gonna? I guess. I guess we'll say that you'll wait for Ive and Gold yeah, all, because then we can pick up with the, the full team um, next time, I think. So um, so I think at that point then, as you guys have captured <laughs> Felifif, and you are off to Grons to cut a deal with the hag sorceress Marathi herself, I think the last thing that we need to see is just what Nolgor does and where he goes is the last thing I want to touch on. So Nolgor, <laughs> you have more money than you can possibly imagine. Where does he end up? <clears throat> so Nolgor... Just giddy with uh, with greed and 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 just the excitement of the whole thing, uh, steers the uh, the little you know cutter that they uh, that they took from it to uh, to Clark Courant, uh and he you know wastes a bunch of it in gambling dens and flop houses and things like that until uh he gets in some sort of uh fight over uh, a slight on his supposed honor there's a younger uh, corsair who you know just doesn't really not impressed with this epic story on the deck of a thrashing uh, black arc and as he goes to uh draw sabers and uh, cross swords um, the old wound makes itself felt. <laughs> he is humiliated in the tavern uh, and uh, sort of laughed out. Moment of uh, greatness. 
lives on in his mind, but he lives out the rest of his days in Clark Harland, poor and sore and bitter. Nargol. <laughs> Nolgor. <laughs> <laughs> Caution retail for the greeds of piracy and, mm. and how to spend the proceeds. Oof. Such greed. That's, uh... <laughs> Amazing. Well, my friends, I think at that point with Nogor spending the last of his days a bitter old dark elf somewhere in a tavern telling stories that no one believes, uh, he becomes uh, the Keith Richards of uh, <laughs> Clark Arant. <laughs> he, has a, he has this beautiful moment leading a, a, a raid on a black arc and treachery and everything. Nobody believes him. Everybody's yeah, like, shut up. Just... Like, no, you didn't. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I think that's where we're going to end tonight's episode of Spite of the Witch King. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the show, let us know. Uh, we'll be back next week at the same time at 5 o'clock Eastern. We've got another uh, three episodes, I think, left in this one. So we're about the halfway mark of these guys. And it can only go uphill from here, right? Um, you guys had some absolutely dreadful rolls. So I would be very surprised if you could manage to roll worse. Do we have any XP roll so we can level up a little bit? Oh, yeah, yeah. Did I give you guys XP last time? I didn't no. recall uh, oh, yeah. anything about... We'll put out in chat, but... My past, yeah. but yeah, we'll uh, <laughs> we'll figure that one out. You guys will get some, get some good shit. Um, <laughs> try and improve the whole process there, but, uh, but yeah. Let's see then. Uh, let's go round the cast and the crew. Did we enjoy ourselves? Where can we find you guys online? Let's start with Mr. Jim Davis. Jim fucking Davis, son. Hey, everybody. Um, loving the game. I, I, I like any sort of like, let's, let's explore the different parts of a world that don't always get looked at. So Empire is great and all, but looking at the other parts of the old world and the Warhammer world are really fun. So I'm enjoying the, uh, the Dark Elf and making it all work and figuring out how these sadistic... <laughs> Fuckers, actually, I actually role play one of these people <laughs> in an interesting way. Um, so I'm enjoying that. Uh, I am one half of WebDM, where we have uh, Dungeons and Dragons and RPG uh, advice videos on YouTube. We also have games on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays on Twitch, uh, which the details of which I'm never can remember. Um, as well as one on Sunday now, uh, thanks to Charlie and uh, the Lost Girl Show. So come and check us out. If you like our videos, uh, come and talk to us. And uh, yeah, we'll see you around. Fantastic. And Charlie. I'm just sat here picturing Noel Gore as like Oscar Wilde now, just penniless, around walking around Paris, see it spending these stories. Uh, yeah, I am Charlie. Cool I'm at Crossfire. Well I <laughs> love playing Warhammer so much with these people. It's always an adventure, it always goes sideways. I love when we roll badly. I know Prue had a really stressful night with it, but it's it's like so much of the story happens when you fail. Um, so yeah, I'm at Frost and Fire on the Twitter, so I play here on Mondays in Inquisitor, uh, which is Mutants and Masterminds 40k game, and I play an Inquisitor, and I'm scary in that. And then I'm here on Wednesdays, and I play a slightly less scary Doctor here on Warhammer. And then, uh, as you mentioned, on Sundays, I also play on WebGM. And I am the game master keeper thing for a new show called The Lost Girls with Cypher System. And I will get the rules right next week. So that would be great. Uh, for everything else, check out my pin tweet. I have a full schedule. Thank you very much. <laughs> Fantastic. And, and Gareth. Again, I'm not going last. What the hell? You're slipping. Um, oh, I'm, shit. I'm, yeah, I'm so fucking tired. I'm sorry. Brilliant. No, that's. No, no. Uh, oh, no, no. Oh, I. What? <laughs> <laughs> But this is a family tradition. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. Uh, I'm Pruitt. I'm the other half of WebDM. And, uh, yeah, so ch check our shit out. And uh, uh, not this Friday. Uh, we'll be back next Friday with uh, Octung Cthulhu here, in, here on Encounter Roleplay on Fridays, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, come check that out. It's, it's been a lot of fun so far. Uh, kicking Nazis in the tentacles uh, is very gratifying. So, uh, But I can't wait to get back here next week. Um, but, yeah... Uh, Back to you. Fantastic. And last but most least, Gareth. This gave me a fleeting taste of being someone that mattered and then snatched out of my cold hands. Uh, again, I, d I don't really have too much I do. I, I just love playing here. I love playing with these guys. Uh, shout out to WebDM. Massively amazing content. Loads of it on YouTube. Like Patreon, support them. Uh, Will uh, has got a 
24, 48 hour, 48 That's hour 48 stream hour coming up. Yeah. Uh, really important Shoddy. one for him. Proper fucking life changing things going on in the life of Will. Help out, come and watch those shows. They're always fucking amazing amazing chances for people to sign up. I'm not sure if that's happening. I'm just speaking for Will. It is, uh, actually. Yeah, you, can, you can sign up to play in 48 hour with us. Sick. There you go. Uh, and I'll be here Wednesday, as always, just being picked on and, and rolling better than Prue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, uh, <laughs> the dice gods will decide next week uh, exactly who rolls best, but that was, uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a rough week for it, but, um, it, it, and okay, earlier today was all in masks, like, that was, that was a bad, just, today was just bad. Just bad. I don't, I don't just like it, around. I don't like it one bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we're gonna be back next week, um, oh, let me drop you guys a little link, oh, no, I closed it, wait, I don't know, the GoFundMe link has the link to 48 hour, if you click on it, there's a, scroll down, there's a link there. Um, but yeah, we're back tomorrow is the day, is Thursday, um, streaming Learn by Play on d, &D channel at 1 o'clock Eastern, I think. And then, um, I don't know what I do things, and then 5 o'clock we're back for Once Upon a Time, which is a D&D game you guys can come along and play with us. It's terrible, hilarious fun, so come along and play. But until next time, my friends, try not to roll too many at once. We want to be there laughing when you do. Good night, everybody. Bye!